Welcome to the stream, everybody. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a pretty good one. We are just about um, to do the sixth, or is it the seventh, um, quest in this line for the main quest. I don't know. Well, either way, we're going to be named Horator here shortly, with any luck. Testing out a new layout here. So, hopefully, this thing will work with you guys. Yeah, so we got the, um... Uh, we got the spell scrolls and stuff over here on this side. We have a little bit of room here clipped up off the top, so that we just have the map and our fatigue and health and magic and all our stats over here as well. So all of that's all in one lovely little area. Nice and big, nice and visual for me. I can't see things in the bottom of the screen very well. Just because that's where like the boom arm of my mic is and all of that jazz, so yeah. So let me go ahead and show you what I've been working on. All right. This isn't it, by the way. I'm just getting my scrolls. So if you look over here on all of the scrolls, when you clip the map off the top, it makes it hard to give you directions. By the way. Ah, no, that's fine. We'll see how bad it is in, in real life. Like, as we're going. So, yes, all of the scrolls, you can actually read and tell what the hell they do now. I'm also using another mod that uh, changes the icons a little bit. Just so that it's easier to go ahead and see in this um, inventory menu screen as well. Wanted to play some Skyrim, but it's too late. It's never too late for Skyrim, man. Just, you know, you don't need to sleep, that's all. That's all that you need. So, um, yes, it says scroll barrier um, 90. 90 is, of course, the value weight of it. Not the, not the weight, but the value. But if you do want to go ahead and have that flavor text of what the title was, you can just go into the actual scroll itself, and it says the second barrier right here, which is the name of the original scroll. Believe it or not, that much data entry took forever to do. But it's totally worth it now because maybe we'll actually use scrolls this time around. Watching uh, London Rook playing Morrowind is fine, though. Hey, that might actually put you to sleep. I don't know. Night is young. Oh, okay, one other thing. Yeah, so the only thing that I did in between this playthrough and the last playthrough that doesn't involve mods is I just went to Aldrune, picked up that glass stuff, and then set it back down again. So that all of our gear is in the same place, but that is it. Haven't really done anything else here. I've got so many complaints when it comes to the UI instead of Morrowind, it's just like... There's only so much polishing that you can actually do. So I have it on good authority that I do not actually need to drag around all of this freaking gear that they give me um, at the end of every single quest. Like this Madstone, I don't, I don't really need. Probably don't need extravagant shoes anymore. In fact, I'm gonna stash all of those just real quickly here, just so that it cleans up our uh, inventory screen just a little bit. Hello, hello! How's it going, Lord Master? How you doing? Would be cool when you carried an uh, armor barrel in inventory. It shows up as a barrel-like backpack. We can go ahead and figure something like that out. I don't have a problem doing some more extra models for you. Just so long as we actually do something about these lanterns here. That is the big thing. Like, I want to have a place where I can store these in, in all in one location. The lanterns, the torches, the candles. What am I working on these days? Uh, Strider stuff, mostly, yeah. Okay, so... I think we need to go to Aldrune. Talk to people about the whole horror tour situation. Just carry one stack of torches, man. Nah, I can't do that. Why walk? Torches don't always activate. 
lanterns always do. Like when you set them down into the world. Besides, lanterns are actually easier to find. One of these days, what I need to do is to just change the icon of this torch so that it's just the head of the torch and it's on fire so it, I can actually see where these things are. Because these look damn near identical to the lockpicks and the lockpicks look damn near identical to the probes and it's just not a good situation, man. Unique lantern holding containers. I'm really tempted to change the UI. I know that there's a modern Skyrim-esque UI, Skyrim-esque, quote-unquote, UI that Mike and Ike did. Which would make the, the UI look just a little bit more like the kind that we have in chat, too. Get out of my way! Actually, you know what? We should probably talk to... Do you need something? Our friend here. Fortune, Outlander. How may I be of service? Currently, the Red Ring counselors are myself, Athrin Sorethi, Archmagister Bolvin, Gariza, Laren, Bara, uh, Bra, um, Bra, Bra, okay. And minor. Please take this copy of the Red Book. It lists each of the counselors and where they're located. Cool. We need to go ahead and get named Naravarine, though. So, Horator. Actually, Horator. That's what we need. You rescued my son. Words cannot express my gratitude. Therefore, I name you Horator of House Redoran. I also promise that I will use my influence with the other counselors of House Redoran. Alas, there is one obstacle. Bolvin Venom. I mean, if your last name is Venom, there's only like so many occupations you can do. Like, James Bond villain, uh, G.I. Joe villain. Yeah, that's about it. And apparently, I'm leader of Red House Redren. So, you know, on the whole, I think he's doing pretty well. We'll never name you an, an Outlander Horator, but if you have the full support of the council, he may agree to an honorable duel. Kill all the Lalu. Oh, you guys are so mean. Had to reload, now it works. Welcome back, man. Honestly, the six houses do not seem great for me. Bunch of assholes. <laughs> well, it depends. This guy seems all right to me. The duel is an honorable tradition dating back at least to the founding of Resdan. Resdane. Each party to the duel makes an agreement as to the compensation that will be given to the winner. The loser is legally bound to this agreement. You've already done a duel, haven't we? Most duels are fought until one party admits defeat or falls in battle. The duel to the death is less common and only ends when one party is dead. The winner of a duel may take what he wants from the loser's possessions, but some consider this dishonorable. First, what rank Redoran are you? I hate Lalu and Redoran. Only tell Vani may live. I don't know. I actually do not know. That's a great question. If any other counselor were killed or murdered, the other counselors would refuse to name you Horizor. But Venom is tyrannical and unjust. And if he were to die in a duel or a fair fight, no counselor could find dishonor in it. I guarantee it. In fact, Venom dies an honorable death. I will. I, I promise I will continue to plead your case to the other counselors. Alright, so we need to go around and just go ahead and check them out, don't we? Check your stats all the way down, yeah. Well, let me go ahead and see if I have to do anything else here. Huh? Uh, they're, they're not actually marked down in the quest log. That kind of 
sucks. Okay, so let's just work our way down, huh? We don't need to go ahead and talk to him because he's probably who we're gonna have to find. Gariza will be in Lethry Manor, the last manor on your left as you enter. Between council, uh, it may be difficult to win his support, but you will have to speak with him and find out what he asks in return. Okay, so we need to go ahead and go to Larithi Manor. It looks like. I am a house cousin. As it looks like. I wonder if I can actually, um... Yeah, I wonder if I can get some advancement. You've met our requirements, but you have not performed enough duties. Alright. So I don't know what house cousin is, it doesn't sound exactly that high, but... Yes, I've been telling that all the time, back when nababbering was a thing. Quite irrationally frustrating. Okay, so we need to go to Lorethi Manor. Nice progress. Thank you, man. That's I this one. Can talk. What do, you want? do you need something, Outlander? So we literally stole somebody. We kidnapped them from... Well, we rescued. need something, Outlander? Greetings, Outlander. I think I've heard of you before. Okay, so we need to talk to... Tell me what you want. What was the name? To... Gariza. And I'm betting that they're gonna be like somewhere in the back. Oh, did you finally rescue that poor girl from Telfir? Nope. <laughs> we don't have a spell to, like, break the lock. That's the reason why we're not going there, at, like, at all. Hey, there's Gariza. Looking all fancy. As Counselor of House Redren, I'm a very busy man. Hopefully this is important. I spoke with Athrin Serethi. I like what he told me about you. You get things done, and show good judgment. Your story is crazy, but your story doesn't matter to me. As long as you can do something about Dekoth Ur and his servants, I'm making you my choice for Horator of House Redoran. Uh, House Cousin is near the council ranks. Lowest ranked councilman, I believe. Okay, so we still got a little bit of um, uh, political climbing to do. That's cool. Latorio, how you doing, man? I told you the key is in his table. No, we picked that key up. We did. We totally did. It is... There it is. Lords of Milk Daughter. All right, so we need to go someplace else next, don't we? I probably should have marked the, uh, <laughs> the, the exit. So this is, sorry, I got a little turned around here. It's private quarters, so I need to go this way. Hang tight a second, guys. This place is a maze, unless you actually mark the things out. Uh, house father is basically a grandmaster choice. Grandmaster choice. Hmm. Why did it pop me out here? Maybe I'm on the wrong level. Yeah, I'm on the wrong level. That's what it is. Hello. Hello. Greetings, Outlander. Don't I know you from That's one reason I hate Redoran, just because you get lost in here. I, I can totally see it. Okay, so we knocked off... Knocked off? It sounds like we made it, we killed her or something. Okay, we got Atherin, we got Gariza. We need... 
Brara. Uh, Honored Counselor of Redrin Council, Vardenfeld District. Lady of Margan. East Aldrune. Morvayan. Okay, so is it here? I think we might just go ahead and talk to him again. Because he's probably going to give me better directions. Wish they wrote that down on the quest, though. In the quest log. It won't bother LR. He gets lost everywhere. It's true. I do. I really do. Okay, so this is Serethi. It doesn't help that there's like no quest markers and every place kind of looks exactly the same inside of uh, Scar. Lord, me good fortune, Outlander. How may I be of service? You can find him in the Cavern of Milk on the Aldrin Caldera Road. Oh yeah, that's right. We need to go ahead and do that quest. We need to finish that quest. Forgot about that. Oh, see, he's in the council house? Is that what it is? Okay, so it was Gariza and... The Lord of Milk. Yeah, we just got curb stomped every time that we went into that place, so... There it is. Uh, Morvane Manor has been overrun. She stays in the Red Ring Council Hall. Speak with her and get their support. You were right. She is in the Council Hall. I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. There we go. Lord of Milk sounds like a metal name. Sounds like a band, actually. Like the Masters of Puppets or something. The Hello. big cheese, huh? Alright, so this is the council hall, and we're looking for Brara. I think. Yeah, it's probably here. Hello. Do you need something, Outlander? Hello? Mistress Brara. Atherin Surethi says he believes your story and believes you can be trusted. I still have my doubts, especially with these rumors that you're a spy from the Empire. But life cannot be lived without risks. I agree we need a horizor, and see no better candidate than you. So let the record show that Counselor Morvain confirms Blink as Horridor of House Redoran. This is awesome! We just go on ahead and talk to these people. We've done enough quests for them, I guess, or whatever. We're high enough rank that they're... They're just letting us, um... Do it without any kind of quest. If this keeps up, all we gotta do is, like, go to a duel with one dude and we'll be a Horridor. That's... Faster than I would have thought. Do you have Moon and Star? I do have Moon and Star. Right here. Yeah, he do. Okay, so the Serethi Manor is over that way. I really should just use mark a spell right there. I that's that would be the smart thing to do. I don't know why I didn't do that. Let's over on this one. Who else is running for Horridor? Sweet! My favorite ring in all of Elder Scrolls War. You can't really see it all that well because of the icon, but like... It's got points everywhere on that. I can just see yourself getting like splinters all of the time. If you ever wore that thing. Doesn't look that comfortable. I suppose it's not supposed to. Okay, so let's... Ooh, some of the other names. Brara, Athrin, Garissa, uh, Lord Hulrin Ramoran. 
Holmerin Ramoran. London Rook, no one else is. I wonder if Turkish people like this game a bit more because of the moon and star sign. It's an actual moon and star. Probably good for punching, yeah, that's true. Then again, I wouldn't want to get punched with anything. Not really into boxic. boxing. Okay, so, by grace of Omsivi, Honored Council, Rhetoran Council, Vardenfeld District. Let's just go ahead and ask him. Tlalrin Ramoran. It is between my home and the entrance to Scar. He has a temper, especially with foreigners, but can he trusts my judgment. I believe I can convince him to support us. Cool. But if you're not in a ravine, you die instantly, so that's uncomfortable. True. Okay, that was Lorethi. Ramoran. Okay, so that's the one that we need to go to. It's this way. Greetings out there. Do you need something out there? Do you need something out there? I suppose we can talk. I suppose we can talk. Make it what quick, Outlander. Athrin Serethi has spoken of your good judgment, and I trust him. I will vote for you as Horazor of House Redrin. I wonder if it's because I'm actually part of this great house, so that they're going so easy on me. Because the other ones, like House Lalu, I had to go ahead and pay, like... It had to have been, like, 8,000 gold, or at least it felt like that much. These guys, all I gotta do is chat them up for, like, a minute, and they're like, Yeah, sure, you can go ahead and be our war leader. Okay, so who do I need left? Red Rain Hordes, or with my influence... So we need to go to Bolvin Venom next, I think. It's so good to meet you. I think that's it, right? Lord... Oh, no, Minor Aroba. Arobar. Grace of Omsivi, Honored Counselor of Red Rain Council, Vardenfeld District, Lord of Northgash of Arobar Manor, Manor District, Aldrin. Okay, so... We need to find Arabor Manor. It's because you're rank and uh, doing Atherin Sarethi's quest to get his son. His son is one of the last quests for you. Veterans are lonely, I guess. I, You know, I guess it's a good thing that we did the Red Rune quest line before. Well, most of it, anyway. Araborn Manor, I so it was this one, I think, right? I suppose we can talk. What do you want? Hello. I should be marking these, like, everywhere that I go. You misspelled it. It's Venom? Entirely probable. I think I'm in the wrong place, though. This does not look like a lord's place. I think he would have his own... These look like barracks or something. Yeah, these are the guard quarters. Okay. I suppose we can... I need to explore a little bit more. Did I just pass him or something? Is that what it is? Rhetoran guard. I suppose we can... I'll tell you what. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that's the guards' quarters. Well, I'm in Arbor Manor. And I don't see... Maybe it's just maybe I'm just missing him down here. Hello. It's currently in his rooms. Go through the 
door to the guard quarters, then go through the next door and then turn right. Miner's room are on the left. Okay, so we gotta go through I suppose we can the guard quarters. That's weird. What are my mods? Good question. So I'm only running a very small amount of mods. The biggest, like the one that I just made today is, okay, so you can actually retrieve all. There we go. So the one that I personally made today is I just went ahead and renamed all of the scrolls so that now that it is on this list, I can tell what the hell each scroll does without having to go ahead and read and then um, each each of the tooltips. So I don't have to hover over all of these things to know that this is a potion of cure blight. This is a potion of chameleon and stuff like that. I'm also running a mod that changes the icons for the... Uh, for the, the, the potions and stuff. Probably the biggest one that you've seen here right now, though, is uh, MWSE containers, and that was actually made by me and Greatness7 a while back. But no, we're, I'm not using a ton of mods, just to, some to help with the UI and stuff. Nothing that um, does like a big overhaul of a campaign or, or nothing like that. And welcome. Do you have any news? I think he's in his bedroom. Tell me what you want. There we I go. Man, you're looking fancy. Look at those pauldrons, man. You must explain why you have come here, and quickly. No speeches or excuses. Use words with care, for I am a counselor of House Rudrin, and a very busy man with many duties and responsibilities. I am not one to stand about idly while others chatter on about the most trivially, trivial of subjects. I have spoken with Athrin Serethi. He believes your story and says you can be trusted. I have known Athrin Serethi since I was a child, and I have absolute faith in his judgment. Please accept my apologies for not seeking you out and accepting you at once. Forgive me for believing these rumors about you being an Imperial spy. You have my vote. Minor Aerobar hereby confirms Blink as Horator of House Redoran. Tell the other counselors that I have given you my blessing. Oh, they're Bone Mold, are they? Really? I don't recognize it. Those are like some World of Warcraft level uh, pauldrons right there. And I'm wearing some pretty big ones myself. Okay. So let's... Go back. I suppose we should let off. Those boots are ruined. Do you need something out next? Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is to check in with the leader and then do that duel. I think, anyway. And it's so nice not having to worry about potions anymore when, when to levitate. It took a lot of money to get to the point where we became like a halfway decent mage. Which we still kind of aren't, but at least we can cast a spell. I think we're in the wrong one. I remember this guy. Just like this run animation so much. It's kind of growing on me, man. It really is. I like the walk animation. Look at that. He's walking with like such freaking confidence. Okay, so where is this guy anyway? If, if Venom dies an honorable death, I promise you can yeah, plead your case to the other counselors. I think we're... Oh, bring me good fortune, Outlander. How may I be of service? I think we're good on all of that. Run is goofy. What's the name of this storage mod? Storage mod takes a little bit of time to set up. Um, Greatness 7 can go ahead and set you straight on it. It's MWSE Containers. You need to use like the very most current version of MWSE, and you need to use the like the beta version of MGEXE. Otherwise, you're just going to get error messages. All 
right, so where is this guy anyway? He's a strong leader and has done great things for House Redrin. How can I explain the hold he has over the hearts of the Redrin people? He brought us back from the certain defeat. He moved the council here to Vardenfell and took our share of the frontier lands. He's a natural leader born to rule. One only wishes that he was fair and just while strong. Latest and greatest versions. Yeah, I, I the only thing that I did is I made the icons and I made the models themselves. All of the magic of that mod lays at the feet of Greatness 7, so yeah, if, if you like that mod, definitely endorse, and uh, you might want to give him your thanks, too. You go through the door opposite the entrance, and up the stairs to the left. Close. I'm guessing that he's in the council hall? Maybe? Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. So... Sarethi. There it is, right there. We need to face that direction. Cool. Well, that was a lot of busy work. Actually, no, we'll just have that expand that just a little bit more. Never mind, don't use MGEXE because of Morrowind Rebirth. Uh, Morrowind Rebirth and MGEXE should work together just fine, shouldn't they? Yeah, it works. they work fine together. Okay, so we need to find Bolvin. Go to the door opposite the entrance, then up the stairs, and then to the left. Okay, so up the stairs. Where is that slave? Speak quickly out And then to the left. You have the support of all the other counselors for the title of House, or for the title of Redder and Horator. You have played your tricks with the other counselors, but they will not work on me. This has gone far enough. If you are not a coward, as well as a fraud, I will put a stop to your ambitions in the arena in Vivek. I will meet you there if you dare face me in a duel to the death. All right, fine. You're on, man. I had no idea that they actually had a there was a duel in the arena. That's pretty freaking cool. Do you want something? Wait, did I? Yeah, I think it's this way. Duel to the death. Needs to have that like old-fashioned Star Trek music whenever that like they would have like Spock and Kirk fight. You know, like I can I can hear it in my head. Come to think of it, there were a lot of duels to the death. Kill, blink, kill, blink. Hey! Oh, I know my mistake. MGSO doesn't work with Morrowind Rebirth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two don't play nice together. I don't think, anyway. Both of them kind of touch everything, and... I can totally see that being incompatible with one another. We make a special trip just for you. Same low price. So I think before we head into Red I Mountain, walk when you can ride. I'm gonna go ahead and change the sword. So let me go into first person here. I want a katana. I mean, this guy kind of screams samurai to me. Well, maybe mushroom samurai. And like these spikes at the end of it just are not doing it for me. I want it to feel a little bit more. I don't know, realistic. 
So yeah, I'm probably going to model a glass katana, and we're going to give this uh, mage bane that specific... Uh, not a retexture, but we're going to give it the different model, right? I'm going to swap it out. You'll get a katana from the Vivic fight? No, but I like this sword. I do. It's been my trusty sword ever since we went to that... Uh, that tomb. It's a good sword. Besides, I don't want just any kind of katana. I want a die katana. I want something that's freaking huge, man. Yeah, I know it's Daedric. I know, but it's all Daedric stuff is also really heavy. I have no problem keeping the sword. That's fine. But this has been my trusty blade for about 10 levels now. So... I can't get rid of it, man. Actually, you know what I should do? Before we do this, I want to pick up some health potions. Because I do not know... Oh, no, I got plenty. Ah, I should be fine. He says, moments before death. Alright, so do I need to... Can I just jump down there? Or is there somebody I need to talk to? Like, what the hell is going on here? Maybe I need to go back to that one dude. Uh, Athrun. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So I want to... Whoa, okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. You are so dead. Yeah, he found his way out. There's some weird next level magic right there. Okay, so we got the manor key. Man, this guy is kind of decked out with stuff. Yeah, Daedric Daikatana. I see the problem is look at the weight on that thing. 60 as opposed to... 16. All right, well, I already have a Daedric Curious and yeah, I'll take the ring too. And the belt. Weight has added bonus on weapons. It makes you knock enemies down. Really? I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. I say use the die katana. Right, well, let's let's take a look. Let's see what it looks like. The problem is, like, if we have, if we take more weight with us, that means that we can't loot things as often. Ooh, I guess that looks pretty cool, though. Look at that. That is not a bad look right there. Mm, I don't know, man. Mage Bane is a... Well, it's a... It's not a Daikatana. It's a Claymore. Same difference, though. Could even enchant it with Feather to weigh less.
Could you? Uh, it's the best in the game, pretty much, and you use the sword so often, so it'll make your life much easier. Just get to a place where you can dump your loot. That's not a bad idea. Uh, we're gonna go back to... Uh, Balmora here, dump off some of that loot. Yeah, because we gotta go through Balmora anyway to get back to Eldrun. Now that makes sense. I mean, it's not like we need to loot anything anymore. We're basically... We've got God-tier armor now. And the only reason why you would do that is because, like, to sell it off later. I am, I'm absolutely happy with everything that we've got for this character, so... Why walk when you can run? Yeah, yeah, the uh, eternal question. If ever I was an Uber driver, that's what I would say whenever I was picking somebody up. Why walk when you can try ride? Uh, God tier armor is to Adric with the God helm itself. Eh, well, I mean, yes, technically, if I really wanted to spec myself out, I would, I would just wear Daedric armor. But come on, man, Daedric armor doesn't look this freaking cool. What I need to get is a freaking mannequin. Actually, a bunch of them. See, I'm getting to the point now where I don't actually need... What boots am I wearing? Ebony boots. Ooh, that's tempting. Okay, what does he look like with ebony boots? Yeah, I don't even care, like... The stats anymore. I just want. I just want to look freaking cool. We've gotten to that point in the game. Okay, so we need to dump the Daedric stuff too. Where is the Daedric stuff? Making custom enchantments is fun. Can't you like lose your your freaking gear that way though? Okay, so this is the Daedric stuff. Um, we're gonna keep the. Ooh, what do I want to keep? The Ebony Short Sword or the Daedric Dagger? The constant effect is nearly impossible. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and sell off one of those glass swords while I think about it. You know, one of the more fun things I did with uh, the signpost inside of Vivic City is there are coins, literally like septums, that are tied on ropes to some of the signs because, I don't know, it just kind of felt right to do. I can't use short blades? Can I not? Do I not have that spec'd out at all? I should have- oh wait, that's a long blade, right? Yeah, like they- I forgot! Morrowind splits that up between um, long blade and short blade. In Skyrim, it's just one-handed or two-handed. I don't know. I'm a hoarder, that's what it is. I just want some Anything extra gold, that's fine. I just got completely ripped off there, but that's... Hail, whatever. I almost finished main quest, just now realized how long blade is different than short blade. It's true! I, I might have used a dagger like three times in this entire playthrough.
Okay, so let's dump some of this gear. Uh, okay, fine. You convinced me. We'll go ahead and leave Mage being here. Okay, so wait. The short sword is... Not the same thing as a long sword. Long swords, um, long blades are just all two-handed weapons, right? Broadswords, sabers, long swords, claymores, katanas, die katanas, effectively. Okay, so we can use this with katanas, but the short sword obviously would be under like the short blade stuff, right? Daggers, tanto, short swords, and walk. Okay, so that's. Shouldn't even keep either of them then. Fair enough. And then we'll take the katana instead. Okay, cool. And then we're basically good on all of this stuff, right? Like, if anything, I want to start, like, dropping off some potions. Because that, I feel like, is weighing me down more than anything else. Yeah, and we can go ahead and pop those. Pop those books back down. Uh, the container weights can build up too if you're not paying attention to them. Good points. I don't think that I have a ton of... Like, this doesn't have any weight, this doesn't have any weight, that's so barely any weight. If anything, it's the scroll bag that's, that's doing it. Because that is a lot of scrolls, and even then, like, these weight is negligible. There's, that's almost nothing. No, I think it's just because I have a Daedric Katana now, and Magebane at the same time. Alright. You're right, though. We should use Daedric. If we're going to be fighting, like... The Freaking um, demigod. We should probably get the most decked out weapon that we can find. I would listen out that you but make it clear. Out to me. I can see their weights in the magic buffs uh, over here. Interesting. Okay. So potion case is 41 points. Th that's actually really freaking useful. I did not know that. Clothing sack is 21 points. What's in the clothing sack? Looting sack. Oh man, there's like a ton of stuff, isn't it? Well, I don't think we're going to be using much of this, but... Like, we can sell some of it off. I haven't enchanted anything yet. It's true, I haven't. Make a fancy enchant for the Daedric? Uh, how do I do that, by the way? That's Alchemist. Clothier. So 
So I want this. That. Is that the Harris Saint or no, it's just a common shirt. And then expensive shoes too. Probably the best thing you can enchant is uh, open 100 points amulet. That is a rite of passage for all Morrowind players. Okay, so I am down for that. Well, who do I go for enchanting? Would it be in the Mage's Guild, maybe? Enchanting? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and, since I've never done this before, save... And I'm kind of paranoid about that. I need an unlock spell, don't I? Uh, get one of those exquisite rings or amulets first, then go to... You need a soul. I need a soul, okay. Check the high elf. Well, I'm. I'm assuming that you mean her. There we go. Open door. 50 points for one second on touch. You know, we might even just be able to get a spell this way, too. Point cost is 60 and spell chance is 32. You know, that's not actually so bad. And then we're gonna do one more too. Area. Oh, why does it say zero though? Do I not have enough? I don't have enough magic. Ah, oh, you're kidding me here. Welcome. If you wish to talk, it is really no trouble at all. I'd have to fortify my magicka before I actually fired off that spell. That's dumb. Alright, so we'll do something else then. I'm better off enchanting a ring or something. Well, I want to go ahead and try this first, and then we'll... You're not like area is one. Spell chance, like basically at sixty percent. Point cost is thirty six. Okay, so that's pretty good, right? That's what we want.
Well, I don't have any, um... That's not true, I do have two Grand Soul Gems, but they're not filled with anything. Don't I need to go ahead and cast a... a spell for that first? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even have Soul Trap, man. Filled Soul Gems are sold upstairs by the Enchanter. Okay. That actually have souls. How do you do? Ooh, that's sixty thousand. <laughs> like, how big of a soul do I need for this enchantment to work? Uh, the Breton has soul trap and summoning spells. Okay. If you want to, Soul Trap your own thing, might save you money. See, that's the thing, like, I don't know, I mean, I'm totally cool with buying something expensive. I don't know, man. Yeah, scroll would work. Oh, one of my summon golden saint scrolls. Yeah, okay. And then I do a soul trap on that, and then I kill it, right? It'd be better than any soul she has, and way cheaper. Okay, we can do that. This seems like an awful lot of work, man. But if we can unlock stuff with it, then that's uh, probably worthwhile. Yeah, let's take some of those anyway. So, we need to... I, I want to say that I have a pouch that's filled with soul gems. I can't remember exactly where the hell I put it. Because I know that I've had more than that. Well, we have two Grand Soul Gems. Okay, so we already have Grand Soul Gems. Those are the largest ones that we possibly can get. We have the Soul Traps. Uh, and we have Summon Golden Saint. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a shot then. Oh, come on. You know you like me. Good enough. Only thing you're missing is a ring slash amulet to enchant and you just sold all of yours to the clothier. Uh, not necessarily. I might still have some over in um, Caius's place. And I also have all of the ones inside of this clothing sack too, so. Oh, but those will already have an enchantment on there. I gotcha. Alright, so let's give it a shot, guys. I feel like horrible things are going to go on here. Alright, and then I need a scroll of Soul Trap.
Hey, we trapped a soul. Okay, so we got... Golden Saint inside of a Grand Soul Gem. So the only thing that we need left now to do is to... Go to an Enchanter, right? Oh wait, we need we need the ring too. Need a ring. Exquisite can hold the best enchants. Hey, look at that! Not completely out of my element here. Yeah. Okay. Imagine an enchantment with 100 lock and unlock 99. Thanks for taking the time and helping me walk through this. Uh, walking me through this. That's so weird. I thought that I had... Maybe it's just covered up with a bunch of stuff. That could totally be it. Okay, so we're going to... Pop these back in. And I am going to get a ring, I think. Like the one that I just kind of sold. Oh my god, this guy right here. Every single time. Maybe you dropped it somewhere on refresh, on activate cache, and forgot to pick it up again? I might have left it inside of Vivic City. Now I can also enchant my gloves, right? Yeah, what am I wearing that isn't enchanted? Like, all of it's based- Oh, I have a shirt that isn't enchanted. I could do that. I don't think I'm wearing a ring, now. Or am I? Ring of Transfiguring Wisdom. Fortify Enchant. So, well, we don't need to go like, Fortify Enchant after this. So, I don't know. I don't think I have an amulet. Yeah, I do not have an amulet. So I'm guessing the more expensive things that you get, like um, if it's an exquisite amulet, it holds the charge better. Is that what you said? A belt would work well. This is an exquisite. This is exquisite. So... Oh, we're probably going to need these anyway. And then I want to sell her off one of those um, sixth house amulets. That's cool too. Cool, because I never use those things. The belt I'm already wearing is exquisite. Yeah, I'm just saying though that if we're going to like do any kind of enchanting in the future after this point, we probably should. Get some more exquisite stuff as well. So, uh, enchanting. We have the belt. We have the soul. Open. And then we need an area of one, right? There goes being honorable and rightful. You just killed the poor guy. Well, I mean, if he didn't stop, this has been like the 17th or 18th time that he has like literally stopped me in my tracks here in Balmora. I mean, come on, man. 
And besides, he attacked me! Area doesn't even matter. I say leave it at zero, looks prettier. Are you sure the area doesn't matter? Is this guy just kind of like messing with me right now? Alright. If try zero, if it doesn't work, reload. That's a good point. Ooh, what should we call it? What do you want to call it, guys? We've got a belt that unlocks things. I feel like there's a dirty joke in there somewhere. I'm just kind of waiting for chat to catch up here. Belt of Passage, hmm? Not bad, not bad. A reverse chastity belt? <laughs> and there'd be like a purient belt. Nah, I'm not gonna call it, like... Reverse Chastity Belt. Uh, okay, fine, fine, we'll do it. What do you think? I don't even know if that's a word. Hey man, it was self-defense. You saw it. You all saw that, man. Alright, we're gonna go with this. Price is 29000 Hopefully I'm not gonna have to pay that. Alright. Works for me. I don't have enough gold to buy this spell. That's 29,000, guys. How the hell am I supposed to get that much gold? How much gold do I have right now? I gotta sell some of the ebony stash? Real, like, okay, who the hell would have that much money, though? That's the thing. It's like a tank versus a water pistol. Also, it helps to get their disposition higher. That's not a bad idea. Let's, I, I think that she's actually pretty high in disposition, though, right? Do you want something from No, me? she's not. <laughs> Persuasion. Okay, so it's only 25,000. Uh, there's rich merchants in Mornhold. Yeah, but we're not going off of we're not going off of Ardenfell until we hit uh, the rest of the main quest. I think the big question is how did you get this far and through the main quest and manage to stay under ten thousand gold? No, I had twelve thousand gold for a little bit, but I've been bribing people left and right, so that's probably it. Slave masters, wizards, kings, noblemen, generals, etc. Okay, well, we will go ahead and do that before we go into Telfir's place again. As this, um, we might need to wait until we do Tribunal to go ahead and get that, because... Where would you like to go? Yeah. We make a special trip just for you. Say no. Hopefully in the main quest they're going to 
We we'll give us some gold when we go to Red Mountain. Time is precious, so make it quick. He hasn't sold any of his. That is not true. I have sold tons of my stuff. It does look kind of nice in my place, though. I'm just saying. Okay, so we need to go to our friend here. What was his name? Ethrin? Let's get the show on the road. And I think he's probably going to send us... Um, I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, wait, it's it's Redoran. What the hell am I doing? Council of House Redoran is in agreement. You are the horator of House Redoran. I hope you are as successful in persuading the rest of Morrowind to unite against Dagoth Gore and his blighted hosts. On behalf of the House and the Council, take the Ring of the Horator, a token of your office. By this ring, others shall know you as your chosen champion. Sweet! Okay, so I think we need to go back to Urshila Q camp, right? Public notice has been added to your inventory. Welcome, right. So Our what's this public notice? Please, talk. Well beloved people of Morrowind, take heed! Take warning! The outlaw named Blink stated the trade of adventurer. Yeah, I was gonna go ahead and put badass as my trade. And I couldn't do it, because I couldn't go backwards, and... Uh, yeah, it was just some kind of bug. The outlaw named Blink, stated trade of... Adventurer, lately called Incarnate and Naravrain, is now shown to... The investigating orator, ordinators and magistrates of this district to be an agent of the pay... Or in the pay of the Imperial Intelligence Service. This outlaw claims are false. The prophecies this outlaw... Uh, sites are discredited. The dishonest character and base purpose of the outlaw in perpetrating this hoax are now made clear to all observers. Blink is sought for the various crimes by ordinators and town guards. Report all encounters with this outlaw to the proper authorities. If you see this outlaw in public, give the alarm. Published by the authority of the Temple, the Order of the Watch, Magistrates of Vardenfeld District, under the signature and authority of the Grand Master Beryl Sala, Captain of the Watch, here in heed. That's kind of mean. Note from the Arch Cannon. A package sealed with an anonymous wax seal containing a single page. Unsigned notes. On the cover of the package. To the Outlander, lately proclaiming his identity as the Naravarain. Be diverted with haste. Or to be delivered with haste. The assertions being made in direct contradiction of the doctrine of the Tribunal, namely, that you are the Naravarain, the reincarnation of the sainted Lord Nerevar, are, in addition to being against temporal teachings, incredible and implausible in the extreme. The revelations made by the Inquisition, namely that you yourself are in fact an agent of the Imperial Intelligence Service, otherwise known as the Order of the Blades, lately made with some substantial evidence by the High, uh, Lord High Archordinator Beryl Sala, further calls into question the validity and motivations behind your claims. However, as incredible as your claims are, as much as they are in direct contradiction of the teachings of the temple and tainted as they are by the interferences to, to be made upon your close assertion or a close association with the covert policies and interests of the emperor the interests of the temple and its leadership and in particular the interests of his immortal lordship Vivek, are best served by a close and personal examination of the claims being made and close and personal examination of the motivations and character of the Clement. The temple 
Through its examinations of its records, in particular the records of uh, Herographa and Aprographa, I'm, I'm butchering those words, I know it, is intimately familiar with the many and varied claims of signs and feats that would mark the Neraverine according to prophecy. Therefore, in the event of the fulfillment of certain of those most remarkable and uh, scarcely credible claims, namely that the Clement should at one time be the acknowledged holder of several ancient titles and power and authority of the Dunmer people, to wit, Horator of the Great Houses and the Neraverine of the Ashlander tribes, the Temple proposes that the Clement of the uh, identity of the Nerevarine shall be present himself for inspection before the, his revered honor, Archcanon, Lord, here we go, Tholer Saryoni, High Archcanon and Chancellor of Vivek, Archcanon of the Cannery of Vardenville, Archpriest of the High Fane, for review and consultation of his claims and identity. However, until such time as the Clement actually has been named Horator, separately and jointly by the three great houses of Vardenfell, at the same time as has been named Nerevarim, separately and jointly by the four tribes of the Ashlanders, there is no purpose in reviewing or discussing, or discussing these claims. Whew. It's almost kind of legal easier. Solar. Oh, that's a weird name. <sighs> okay. Because the temple's official propos um, position on the prophecies of the Nerevarine, and in the interest of preserving the security of the Clement from those parties who might wish to do him harm, it is convenient that the Clement of the title of Nerevarine shall present himself in secret to the Archcanon Serioni in the Archcanon's private quarters in the High Fane of Vivek. To signify agreement with these terms and conditions for a meeting with the Archcanon, the Nerevering Clement may present himself to the healer of the High Fane of Vivek, Danso Indules, and the, necess uh, ne bleh, and the necessary arrangements will be made. Once again, no purpose is served by meeting until the Clement is named Horator of the Three Great Houses and is named Nerevering of the Four Ashlander Tribes. Why do I pick to read the legal docs? Wait, they just gave it to me, man. We can read something else. Written at the request of and in the name of his reverend honor Tholar Saryoni, Archcanon and Chancellor of Vivek. Delano Loran, Priest of Vivek, Assistant to the Archcanon. Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, so basically what they're saying is I need to go into Vivek if I want to. Yeah, if I want to proceed in this quest line. I think I might want to go up to um, Urshilaku Camp again first, though. It might be good to get a consult with, like, the one person who is, like, Do you need not trying to kill me right now. Just saying. Can you ask your question quickly? I think we might do the Tell Fear stuff after... Yeah. We make a special after we go to Red Mountain. Same low price. No, I want to go to Morgan. We make a special trip just for you. So you, you don't want to be buttonies with the ordinators, though. You got the same pauldrons. Yeah, but they look much better on me. I wonder how many viewers we lost when I was like reading that legalese document. Probably like half. You got the same pauldrons, eh? Remember, it's not about what you wear. Well, actually it kind of is. But half of it isn't about what you wear. It's about how you wear it.
You guys were totally right, by the way. The medium armor looks like freaking baller, man. Yeah, it seems like everyone is gone. <laughs> Not gonna lie, you tabbed away listening to music. Okay, no longer have Mage Bane, so I need to... Well, how was I supposed to know that they would go ahead and put a legal document right in the middle of that? Half of it is what you have in your hands. Okay, so I need to... Put this as Daedric Dyke, it's on it, there we go. But hey, I'm back! Welcome back, man. I wish that I could pull up one of the books and read it while I'm walking back and forth here. It'd be a lot of fun. I don't know, man. Mage Band was pretty good, too. Alright, so... I do not have a levitate thing on speed dial, do I? Lift self. There we go. You can wear whatever you want, however you want, when you have Daedric weapons in your hands. God damn, I love, like, one-shotting those guys. You're one-shotting Kagutis. Hey, it's the Kagudi. The good, they're fine, man. It's the freaking cliff racers. Okay, so Urshiluku camp. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Probably down this way. I might have actually passed it. I'm going the wrong freaking way. Of course I am. Because of course I am. So yeah, I think the, the maximum hit on this weapon is 60? Yeah, 60 points. Where's the freaking enemies? Are they in the water? Is that what it is? Yeah, this Daikana is truly amazing, especially deadly against defenseless people from Dalmora. Oh my god! How many times do I have to say it, man? He attacked me. All I did was say something. I said hello. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Let him kill me? But then that's modified by your strength and your long blade skill, right? I do not know. I don't think so, actually. I think um, the long blade skill and could be strength modifies the chance to hit. G7 would have to tell you on that either way, though. Life isn't over. You can still get smarter, or cleverer, or more experienced, or meaner. But your body and soul just aren't going to get any younger. 
Okay, so... Willpower. Because that's... Yeah. Strength and endurance, I'm guessing. Yeah, strength is up to 90. I might actually, like, um, do intelligence instead. I feel like... If we're, we're relying more and more on spells these times, so... Yeah. Yeah, sprinkle some moon sugar on him. I was kind of sad to see that, like, katanas weren't in Oblivion at all. I mean, you could mod them in, of course, but... Actually, no, that's not true. That is not true. They, the, the Blaze agents had them. What the hell am I thinking? Share some sugar, sweet skooma. So, let me ask you guys this. W what the hell is that? <laughs> Is that somebody I can talk to? Or is that somebody who's gonna try and kill me? Okay, can't talk to. Isn't trying to kill me. Or if he is, he's just like really slow. Alright, whatever. That thing is trying to kill me. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man, but like every single character that I play just always ends up like with a with a die katana. I shouldn't say every single character because I have a pacifist, but most characters that I play. That is a Daedroth. You should kill it. He seems fine to me. Kind of rocking that one right nipple ring. Or was it left? I don't know. Which one's the gay one? Which one's the gay side? Go ahead, have that. What do you mean? Wise woman's yard. Here we go. You are the Nereverine. Ask, I shall answer, with Azura's blessing. You have been named Nereverine by the four tribes in Vardenfell. You will fulfill that part of the prophecy. Or Shiluku. Okay, so like, and you fulfilled the seven visions and trials. I think that we went all this way and we don't actually need to go to her. Alright, fair enough. So I am going to do a mark spell here. Go ahead, I'm listening. Awesome. And then we're just going to use Divine Intervention to get back. Guess it was not tasty enough. I think I'm delectable. That's when you know your AI is bad. The player can't tell if they're enemies or not. Every side is my gay side. It's true. So true. It's because I'm so freaking fabulous. I'd wear that. No, I want to... Do I have a... Spell of, of return? Telekinesis. There's recall. I don't need recall. I need to get back. Take all. I don't have a spell of... Divine Intervention, do I? Great, okay, I'm just going to walk. That's fine, we know the way back. Daedras are totally different, they look like alligators. 
Yeah, we actually fought one um, in the West Gash, not the West Gash, the, the other side, the Grazelands. Uh, the Game of the Year edition had a very detailed one. I have a proud respect for anybody with a nipple ring. Just assume they're a Morrowind lore expert. As well you should. It's gotta be gold, though. A uh, nice thing about Daedric Weapon, it won't need repair for a long time. I don't know, I still kind of miss my Mage Bane weapon, though. When and if we ever do that, um, that spellcrafting mod, that's going to be the first thing that I add. So let me ask this, guys. I, I need to level up my wisdom sp uh, because I want to get this Magicka level up to at least 60. Right? So I need to do Wisdom and I need to do Intelligence. Those are the things that I need to level up. Or is there like gear that I can wear that will fortify my magic? That's a, that's a better question. Because if there's gear that I can wear that can do that for me, then I don't even need to go ahead and level up those stats. There's a mod that adds glass katanas. Awesome. Means I don't have to make that model. I'll just go ahead and rip it and replace Mage Bane with it. Or hell, I might even just go ahead and add a chest or something that, or add one of those stations that you can swap out weapons for one for another. I don't know. Plenty of different ways that we can do that. Okay, so we need to go to Vivix, so I'm guessing Nissus? Where would you like to go? And then... Oh wait, have I even been to Nissus? Oh, tell me that I have, please. <gasps> I have not! Okay, well I'll tell you what. We make a special trip just for you. Say no. Yeah, you guys didn't see that. So we'll walk down to Nissus and then we'll take Nissus down to Gnarmok. Ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. I was doing so good this playthrough. I thought we explored every single city. Apparently we didn't. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, right now we are walking down to Nissus. We got kind of like a fully decked out character. Level 17-ish. Yeah. Broke your rule, now you have to turn up to 50 difficulty by 50%. Yeah, I don't remember that. I do not remember agreeing to that. <laughs> Maybe next playthrough. So yeah, if, in case you're wondering what the hell's going on. We're doing a Morrowind playthrough right now, but one of the rules that we have, that we set up from the beginning, is that if we go to, um, if we fast travel someplace, we have to walk there first. And so right now, we are heading down to... Uh, Nissus. Because I was kind of dumb. And then we'll take Nissus down to Vivic City. In a roundabout way. I think we're at just like the default level of difficulty here. So, we have to be getting close to the end here, guys, right? It's actually not that bad when you're at this level. Ah, uh, don't worry, man. You messed up 
I messed it up by killing the guy from Balmora. Traveling to Nissus isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah, I am never going to live that down, am I? I see how it is. This is cool. Never been here before. Look, that's neat. I am completely impressed. Like every time that I see one of these um, Dwemer cities, because they're just using the same kind of assets over and over again, but every time that they do, it kind of remixes it. Just a little bit. Okay, so we need to go down south. I never explore any ruins. Well, we're gonna explore a lot of ruins in, in when we get to Red Mountain, I'm guessing. We are on a mission. We're on a goal here. No lollygagging. Go to the bottom of the bridge? Really? What's at the bottom? Is there something cool down here? I don't I don't see anything, guys. Are you talking about this bridge over here? Ah, hello there. I was hoping a handsome young gentleman like yourself would be happen by. Might you take a moment to help a lady in distress? Okay. Uh, well, I dropped my ring, and I can't seem to find it. I think it must have rolled down into that pool there. But I can't go in because I'm expected to miss this shortly. You see, I'm a private dancer. Ooh, okay. I can't uh, very well smell like icky muck water now, can I? Would you please go get it for me? The water's not very deep. I'll be very grateful and in your debt. Well, what's... Okay. Like, sure, why not? Why not? Oh, thank you! When I'm finished dancing this evening, perhaps we can get together and discuss... What have you guys gotten me into here? All right, see? Always a gentleman. Well Good okay, so we're looking for, hey, there it is. What? Wh what the hell? Why, why is she attacking me? That was rude. MGE makes this like so much easier to find. Amulet of Holy Amulet of Shadows? Chameleon 80 seconds or 80% for 60 seconds on cell. That is so good. <laughs> I mean, it didn't do them any good, but seriously. Cool Viper Ring and then 130. God damn, man. Thanks for the pro tip. That was awesome. Why didn't I hear Azura's voiceover? Like, where? Where was Azura supposed to be? So this mini quest is an ambush. She lures people into the bog and then magics them, huh? I mean, if I was level like two or three or something, that would have totally just freaking killed me. Most OP amulet in the game. I can believe it, man. 80%. 
for 60 then and like that thing has a full charge of like what was it 75 charges that is so freaking good Twelve hundred charges. <laughs> I could literally be in shadow form for like an entire year. Uh, it's not Azura, it's the lady that's there. No, well, what do you mean? Okay, so now let's go back to Vivic City. Like we've had we've had Azura talk to us a couple times, but that was always part of the main quest. It was never like a side quest. Uh, the thing that makes this one special is it's chameleon, not, and not an invisibility, so you can even steal stuff while you're hit. Really? See, I didn't know the difference between those two. That's incredible. I want to check out Wolverine Hall first. Because, like, there's a Divine Intervention spell. Like, this here, as I've been told, as I understand it, is actually really difficult to navigate your way around. Right, this, this place here is kind of notorious for getting lost in, I believe. Maybe. I might have the wrong fort here. Can wow, these guys are like... Be trusted. Are like all of these guys orcs? I'm kind of noticing a trend here. Okay, so maybe it wasn't this place. Wolverine Hall is the one inside with Mora. That makes sense, yeah. This is just Nissus. Wonder why there were so many orcs there. That was weird. Alright, so travel to... Yeah, we've been to Sedanin. I think what we're gonna do is to travel to. No, not to Vivek. Yes, to Vivek, and then we're gonna go ahead and take the long way around. I don't want to go through the city because then ordinators will probably attack me on sight. So we'll. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and go on the outskirts here. Head up to Ebonheart and then walk across the the bay. Wolverine Hall is where Hugh Jackman hangs around after his last movie. That's the best joke I've ever made. What's going on with that guar there? You trying to eat me? Is that what you're trying to do, friend? Okay, so you're kind of over here. By the way, if the screen gets too dark or too light, just go ahead and let me know. I have it set up so I can turn up the gamma for the stream, not for myself. So you guys can see what's going on, even though I can't. I'm liking the minimap that's up top. That's, that's really convenient, actually. The only thing that I wish it would do is, like, when I switched over to this menu, 
it, we would have like a bigger uh, map. That would be super, super nice. But alas, I cannot. Guar. Yeah, I like this. This is better. Okay, so I don't want to cause a scene here. It's probably unavoidable either way. But we'll give it a shot. Coming in under, under, under night. Under the moons. Watch out for the ordinators, yeah. We might actually use that... Well, I don't know if we're going to use that yet or not. Probably should. I don't want to do any kind of levitating. I think that we can go back this way. Because I don't believe that there's any ordinators down here. If memory serves. Kind of come in the back way. Whoa, okay. There, there's one right there. So we need to get inside the temple. Uh, let's... What was that? Amulet of Shadows. That's right. Just don't talk to the ordinators. Yeah, that would be bad. Probably shouldn't talk to her either. So who am I supposed to uh, meet up with anybody? I, well, anyway, I think it's inside of the... Inside of the high pain, they said, right? Let's see if we can sneak by. Okay, yeah. They attack... Um. On talk, not on sight. Gotcha. So I think it was this individual here that we're supposed to talk to. Burrell Sala, thank you. Ooh, I'm not seeing anybody. My crime has been reported? Like, what the hell? First off, they can't see me, and secondly... What crime? You cannot escape the righteous. You cannot escape the righteous. Yeah, okay, whatever. We'll do something with the Thieves Guild after that. Like, I'm not seeing who I'm supposed to go to. Just out of curiosity, how much is my bounty? 50. Okay, so it's not that bad.
All right. Well, I, I think we're just going to have to risk talking to him. And worse yet, we learned you're an agent of the Emperor and an outlaw. Well, I... Pff, okay. I warn you, just because I talk to you doesn't... Don't think that everyone will. Others reach for weapons when they see an outlaw and a heretic. Okay, so... I can't read it during battle. Like, who the hell am I fighting? Go away. Why must you honor me? I could kill everyone. Do I seek to join the temple? No, I'm looking for, um... Great. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Tholer Saryoni. Okay, now that now that makes sense. They hate you here. Yeah, kinda. The temple must protect the people from false doctrines, and your association with Imperial sorry, like Berel Sala, that thing kinda threw me. Because I thought that's who I was supposed to talk to. Uh, the temple must protect its people from false doctrines, and your association with imperial intelligence makes your motivations and integrity suspect. But you have been chosen horator and raverine by the Denver people, and we have reached a crisis with Dagoth Ur. We can no longer defend the people against the awakened Sixth House. And you and your prophecies may represent our last hope. Our situation is desperate, but I would rather you hear the details of our situation and the circumstances leading up to the situation from Lord Vivek himself. Ooh, this is exciting. We're gonna go inside of the palace. Never been there before. He asked to see you. Would you agree to a private meeting with him and hear in person what he has to say? Good, here are two keys. One to the private back entrance to my quarters. Okay. And the other to a locked entrance to Lord Vivek's palace. I regret that at present the ordinators are not completely under my control, so for now I ask you to avoid confrontations with them. Lord Vivek is expecting you. His lordship is remarkably patient, but perhaps it would be better not to keep him waiting. Ah, uh, see, I got my eye on you, man. Screw that! You cannot escape the righteous. I want to know what was in the back room. Actually, like, why did he give me a key to the back room? That doesn't make any sense. Way, man. Oh, oh, okay, that's not good. <laughs> what the hell? No, 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 this is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> so much for stealth. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I just hand shook like every single ordinator in that place. All right, moving on. Plank. 
Hi. Why, yes, I am the Nerevarin. Okay, so this is trapped. Do I need to undo the trap first? I'm going to be super cautious here and say yes, I do. Ooh, this is cool. So is that all that he does here? Alright. I expected you. We have business. You and I. When I was young like you, I was very impatient. So I will keep our business short. Then, later, there may be time for other things. First, I propose to remove my curse upon the Nerevarine, end the persecution of the dissident priests, and proclaim all Morrowind that Blink is the Incarnate and Nerevarine, the prophesied savior of Morrowind, and the last hope to withstand the menace of Dagoth Ur and the Sixth House. These things I will do, whether you wish it or not. Next, I propose to surrender to you the power and the responsibility of defacing or defeating Dagoth Ur. You may choose to refuse. I will not compel you. You will receive the power as a gift in the form of an artifact called Wraithguard. You may accept the gift, then do with it as you will. You will receive the responsibility as an oath. You may give your oath, then keep it or break it as you like. First, will you accept Wraithguard as a gift? In my library, I have made official. I have made available two conflicting accounts of the events of Red Mountain. My own true account, and another false account, common among the Ashlanders and preserved in the Apogrypha. I don't care whether you believe my account or not. I leave it up to you to judge what, which is true. Okay. So, there is, um... In the library, there are two accounts of what happened to Red Mountain. Let's take a look. If you're here for trouble, you'll get more than you bargained for. Keep going, Outlander. So, where are these, um... Where are the books? We're watching you, scum. Will you accept Chimbusha as a gift from Lord Vivek? It's in the room. It's in the room where he is. Oh, okay. That makes sense. No, it's this way. Why do you outlanders think you can bother anyone? I have a feeling that I might actually have to fight this guy, so... Ah, I can't rest, can I? Can I do like a... Good enough. So where are these books, man? Oh, they're in the back. I gotcha. Battle of Red Mountain. Plan to defeat Dagoth Ur. Dagoth Ur's plans and Nerevar at Red Mountain. Let's just go through them. I know nothing about this lore, so... 
the plan to defeat Dagoth Ur. For the past 20 years, the Tribunal have tried unsuccessfully to execute this plan. However, we failed because we were required to stage an assault and simultaneously maintain the Ghost Fence to prevent the threatening, threatened large-scale breakout of Dagoth Ur's blighted hosts. With the Nerevarine leading the assault and the Tribunal free to devote their full energies to maintaining the Ghost Fence, this plan has a greater chance of success. Unfortunately, however, the loss of the artifacts Sunder and Keening, and the recent increase in Degoth Ur's strength poses new problems for the execution of the plan. Therefore, our proposed plan has the following five phases. 1. A series of aggressive raids to scout inside Ghost Fence. 2. A series of aggressive raids to neutralize Degoth Ur's Ash Vampire kin and recover artifacts from the bodies of his kin. 3. An assault on Gate Citadel Veminal to neutralize Dagoth Vemin and other artifacts uh, and recover the artifact Hammer Sunder. Okay. 4. An assault on Gate Citadel Odrosal to neutralize Dagoth Odros and recover the artifact Blade Keening. 5. An assault on Citadel Dagoth with the artifacts Wraithguard Sunder and Keening to sever Dagoth Ur's connection to the heart of Lorcan and thus destroy Dagoth Ur. That's his library for short. Okay. Not the place that actually says Library of Vivek. It, no, it's the four pages on a lectern in the back. All right, whatever. This is actually going to take quite a bit of time to read, guys. So, and I'm going to be reading all of it. Might want to pull up a chair. Might want to get something to drink. This is the reward that I get for, um waiting for so long so I'm excited phase one raids inside of the ghost fence the tribunal ordinators and buoyant armagers are familiar with the terrain and will provide maps and current intelligence reports the region inside the ghost fence is dangerous and the Naravaring will need to be familiar with its particular challenges after measuring skills and resources against Dagoth Ur's defenses the Naravaring will know better how to pace a campaign, alternating raids with improving skills, getting better equipment, and stockpiling resources. 2. Raids upon Ash Vampire Citadels The Death Ur's kin have become remarkably more powerful in recent decades after remaining stable for thousands of years. If they can be individually isolated and destroyed, they will not be able to support Degath Ur in later stages of the war. It may also be that the a dramatic increase of their power comes from items enchanted by Degas or salvage of such items might be contribute to our resources. 3. Assault on Gate Citadel Veminal Essential to recover the artifact Hammer Sunder for Phase 5, the Ash Vampire Degas Venom has possessed or has possession of Sunder and probably seeks to destroy the secrets of its enchantments. He may also have access to notebooks and journals of Kag... Renax that have survived the Dwemer workshop or survived in the Dwemer workshop of Eminol. Phase 4 Assault on the Gate Citadel or Dosol. Essential to recover the artifact blade Keening for Phase 5, the Ash Vampire Dagath Ordros has possession of Keening and probably seeks to discover the secrets of its enchantments. He may also have access to notebooks and journals of Kagrenax that have survived the Dwemer workshop of Ordosol. Phase 5, Assault on Citadel Dagoth. All the previous stages are preparations for this stage. Recent expeditions show that Citadel Dagoth has undergone extensive expansion. The location will need to be explored carefully. The known route to the Heart Chamber will be well defended. Alternate routes may exist. Dagoth Ur will have anticipated our plan to destroy him by attacking the heart. Okay, so we gotta kill Dagoth Ur by attacking the heart. What's the heart? And he will almost certainly personally oppose approach to the heart chamber. Together, the tribunal could not defeat him, and he has grown stronger since then. Admittedly, the tribunal had the distraction of maintaining the ghost fence simultaneously with fighting Dagoth Ur, but even so, the challenge seemed daunting. The adoption of this phased campaign seems to offer the best chance for success. 
In retrospect, the tribunal's decision to directly assault Citadel Dagoth rather than proceed step by step through lesser objectives must be seen to have been a serious error. The tribunal did not feel it had the option to of a slow-paced and deliberate campaign, given that they had many other competing priorities, not least of which was the maintaining of the ghost fence and the outer defenses surrounding Red Mountain. The Nerevarine, on the other hand, should be best served by a careful step-by-step -step advance with the additional advantage of building confidence along the way while, suc uh, while successes would be undermined would undermine Dagoth Orr's own assurance of his defenses. Employing Kagrenex, Kagrenex, okay, Kagrenex, Kagrenex, employing Kagrenex tools against Dagoth Ur, the source of Dagoth Ur's supernatural powers is the heart of Lorcan. I feel like we should highlight this passage right here. The heart is also the source of the tribunal's divine power. During mythic times, the gods took and hid Lorcan's heart beneath Red Mountains as a punishment for creating the mortal plane. During mythic times, the gods took and hid Lorcan's heart beneath Red Mountain as punishment for Really? The Dwemer discovered the heart while building underground colonies. High craft lord Kagrenak created enchanted tools intended to tap the powers of the heart. The War of the First Council was fought to prevent this sacrilege. Kagrenak's use of these tools and the disappearance of the Dwemer race marked the end of the war. Nah, mate, just line, uh, beeline to the Citadel and punch him in the face. Nah, this is exciting! I think it's interesting. I'm wondering how long the other books are, too. Like, I might be reading this for, like, an entire freaking hour, if need be. Okay. A high craft lord, Kagrenak, created enchanted tools and tempted to tap the power of the heart. The War of the First Council was fought to prevent this sacrilege. Kagrenak's use of these tools and the disappearance of the Dwemer race marked the end of the war. Kagrenak's tools were recovered by Lord Nerevar and Dagoth Ur. Dagoth Ur was left to guard the tools while Nerevar came to consult with us. Okay, so he, he actually had the tools. When Nerevar came to consult with um, the tribunal. His advisors. In Nerevar's absence, Dagoth Ur experimented with the tools upon the heart and was corrupted. We returned to discover a deranged Dagoth Ur who refused to turn over the tools. When he attacked us, we drove him away. Uh huh. We left Red Mountain with the tools, and subsequently Sotha Sil discovered their secrets. Collectively, we used the tools to establish a connection with the heart, enabling ourselves to transform our mortal natures. Thus, we became the Tribunal. Why did Nerevar have to die? Dagoth Ur had survived our attacks, and without the tools, in a manner not well understood, Dagoth Ur also managed to establish a connection with the heart, and to transform himself into an immortal being. Our plan to destroy Dagoth Ur also runs the risk of destroying the Tribunal. The plan is to permanently disrupt Kagrenak's enchantments upon the heart, severing connections with Dagoth Ur and ourselves, and rendering us all once again mortal. A mortal Dagoth Ur may then be destroyed by mundane means. This, the loss of godhood and the possible death of the tribunal are judged a necessary risk and sacrifice. Yeah, this might be propaganda. He said that there was like two different accounts. This seems to, well, I don't know. I don't know. The normal procedure for establishing connection with the heart is a three-step process. The wearer of Wraithguard strikes the heart with the hammer, Sunder, causing the heart to produce a pure tone. Then, the wearer of Wraithguard strikes the heart with the blade Keening, shattering the pure tone into a prism of tone shades. These tone shades are then imprinted upon the substance of the wearer of Wraithguard, giving him an immortal and divine nature. Nerevar had to die because he didn't want to use the heart to achieve godhood. 
Boring. Get to the killing and bloods and guts. Dude, we haven't even, like, st we're still on, like, the first book here. There's four of them. The Nerevering will n not be taught the secret rituals required to perform the third step. Instead, the Nerevering will strike the heart with keening for a second time, causing its tones to diverge into unstable patterns of interference. Further repeated strikes with keening will further disrupt the tones, with the ultimate result of shattering and dispelling Kagrenek's original enchantments, binding the heart, thereby severing the heart's links with Dagoth Ur and with any surviving heart rites, and with the tribunal. Destroying Kagrenek's enchantments upon the heart will also stop the corrupt effusion of the heart's divine power and end the blight on Morrowind. So basically, these guys are willing, to, they're saying it anyway, they're saying that they're willing to give up their godhood to stop Dagoth Ur. Uh huh. Why does that not seem right to me? The Nerevarine may be tempted to steal the power of the heart. Dagoth Ur and Sotha Sil alone know this secret. Dagoth Ur may, in extremity, propose to teach the Nerevarine to use. Kagrenak's tools to become a god. We doubt that the Nerevarine is fool enough to trust Degas Ur, and are content to take this risk. What happened at Red Mountain is a complicated and controversial subject. Yeah, no kidding. Be warned, the Nerevarine cannot safely equip either Keening or Sunder unless wearing Wraithguard. The Nerevarine will be injured every moment while holding either of these artifacts unless protected by a Wraith Guard. Persistence will be rewarded with death if Nerevarine can equip an item while not wearing Wraith Guard and receive no injury. The item is a counterfeit. That's good to know. Like, if, if we come into a situation where we, we have a counterfeit... Uh... If somebody's offering us a choice, we can go ahead and put one of them on and see like, which one's actually hurting us. A last note. Dagoth Orr must not get a hold of Wraithguard. The Nerevarine must prepare and use a recall or Amsivi intervention if there's any risk of death or capture. Read 36 um, Sermon of Vivek, focusing on the first letters of each paragraph that will cl clarify who and why... Who and why Nerevar was killed. Hmm. The element of surprise. Dagoth Orr will not expect you to destroy Kagranak's enchantments on the heart. He does not know it is possible. He would not do it himself. And he knows we never have tried it. He will not believe anyone would want to sacrifice the promise of such power. Further advancement in House Dagoth, as in all great houses, is by challenging is by challenge and confrontation within the hierarchy. The Nerevarine's challenge and defeats of Ash Vampires and battles with the Sixth House will be viewed in that light. Dagoth Ur and his kin may assume the Nerevarine's ambition is to control the heart. Given that assumption, it is only reasonable that the Nerevarine would try to defeat each of Dagoth Ur's subordinates in turn, working up to Dagoth Ur. If the Nerevarine can defeat Degas Ur and control the heart, so much the better. But lo uh, logistically, the Nerevarine would wish to rise as high in the hierarchy as possible before cutting a deal with the head of the house. Degas Ur should try to recruit the um, Degas Ur should try to recruit the Nerevarine into the house Degas. It may be possible to pretend to join him, then betray him. However. Any attempt to deceive him would be very risky. House Dagoth has a tradition of subterfuge and treachery, and because he is a deceiver, he will expect deception. Closing Remarks We place no compunction upon the Nerevarine to adhere to the plans described here. We believe that they offer the best chance of destroying Dagoth's war, but we have... But we have also chosen to place our trust in the Nerevarine's judgment and skill. Frankly, we see no alternative. Events on Red Mountain most likely caused a dragon break, meaning all the versions of the events took place at the same time. 
Yeah, Tess is kind of like wobbly like that when it comes to its lore. It's not a bad thing. If there are doubts or questions, speak with Vivek. He has agreed to serve the Naravarine... Yeah, he has agreed to serve as the Naravarine's guide and counselor for this campaign. It may be that if the Naravarine succeeds, the tribunal will not survive. Such sentiments as might have been expressed to the tribunal should, in that case, be addressed to the land and people of Morrowind. May the happy convergence of fortune and prayer meet our, in our destiny. On behalf of Lady Almalexia and Lord Sothisil, Vivek. Okay. So let's um, read about Dagoth Ur's plans. This is actually kind of a big one, too. Dagoth Ur's plans. The following documents were prepared by the uh, temple, scholars, and agents of the Inquisition for Lord Vivek. From interrogation of captured sleepers and other Sixth House cultists, from a study of manuscripts written by cultists and victims of dream-induced mania, from interviews with Lord Vivek concerning historical campaigns against Red Mountain, and from broad conjectures and interferences made upon these materials, this is our best estimate of Dagoth Ur's motivations and objection, objectives in this most recent phase of his war upon Morrowind. 1. Basic Objectives I really enjoyed the mood of getting to Vivek's Temple my first time. Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting here. I'm glad... This is like the very first lore dump that actually feels like it's... Substantial, you know? Like a lot of them, they were like repeating the same things over and over and over again. This is like, I'm, and it's not saying that I'm getting answers here, but... It's interesting hearing like accounts and stuff. Okay. Basic objectives. Establishing a theocracy in Morrowind based on the worship of the newborn god Akulakan. Akulakan. Second Numidium, to be created by Dagoth Ur from the heart of Lorcan, and the body constructed according to the principles and rituals pioneered by the Dwemer Kagranak. They're, they're trying to build a god? Establish the ancient heirs of the house Dagoth as the god priests of Akulakan, and the sixth house of Dagoth Ur as dominant political power in Morrowind. Through charismatic conversion, unite the Dunmer under the guidance of Dagoth's Ward to battle against the foreign animals who hold Morrowind in subjugation. Note, Dagoth Ward has apparently adopted the views and motivations of the Dwemer High Craft uh, Kagranak. In effect, he re recapitulates the ancient blasphemous folly of the Dwemer. Well, I mean, if he's... Like, we keep on hearing the Dwemer over and over and over again, which makes me think that, like, the final dungeon is gonna be... Dwemer Ruins. It's gotta be. It's, like, that That has to be it. There's, there's no other way. Expose the false worship of the Tribunal and destroy the ecclesiastical authority and political power of the Temple. How much the dissident priest or the cult of the Naravarine may be controlled or influenced by the Sixth House in this regard is open to speculation. By the way, there's a copy of the 36th Sermon of Vivek in the Secret Library in the Hall of Justice. I don't know if I could read five books and if everybody would stay with me. We're probably, like, just bleeding members right now. That's cool. Like, I'm interested in this. Three, expatriate all remaining individuals and in, of inferior and mongrel races from Morrowind. Four, drive the Empire from Morrowind. Five, recover ancient territory stolen by Skyrim and Argonia. Six, extend the worship of Akulakan to all... Am I saying that name right? Akulakan? I think that's it. Extend the worship of Akulakan to all nations of Tamriel through the subversion and conquest. Plans to establish and expand the Sixth House. Phase 1. Secure Red Mountain against Tribunal Intruders. Deny Tribunal access to the heart, weakening the temple while securing Red Mountain for the creation of Akulakan. 
keep the construction of the second Numidium a secret. Phase 2. Create passive servants in ever-widening circles around Red Mountain by broadcasting compulsion. Couched in dream imagery to susceptible subjects in their sleep. Establish a major operational base at uh, Kogarun for further operations in the Ash Wastes. Establish smaller bases near small port villages and in lower class waterfront districts in Vivek. Infiltrate and subvert smuggling syndicates. Recruit willing followers from the disaffected populations, including the underworld, the poor, the rabid anti imperial activists. Phase 3. Expand from smaller bases to other towns and villages, and recruit and indoctrinate subjects made susceptible by dream sendings. Occupy abandoned towers and ruins, and train corrupted cultists as raiders and irregular troops. Identify, discredit, and disseminate possible sources of political resistance. Phase 4. Use assassination and terror to weaken district. Uh, weaken, distract, and disrupt legion and imperial bureaucracy with uh, along with their Lalu sympathizers, inspire popular uprisings of the native poor against the foreign rich and powerful. Summon sleepers and dreamers to Dengaz War to work on the Second Numidium. Vivek being a self-proclaimed poet is a master of covering his ass. In verse. Interfering... Dig... Uh... Yeah, interfering Dagat Ur's perspectives. Inferring. Sorry. Inferring Dagat Ur's perspectives. Dagat Ur thinks on a large time scale, and for the most part, in the outside of time scale of the divine consciousness. He thinks that only obstacles of mythic scale are worth consideration. He believes that he is fated to rule Morrowind, to free Morrowind from, of the Empire and to become the new hard-loving father of Morrowind. Given that perspective, the only opposing forces Degas Ur worries about are the Tribunal, the Daedra, the Emperor, and the Incarnate. You need to put some evidence of Sixth House bases in the outlined Vivic areas you're making? Yeah, like that would actually be kind of cool. Uh, some evidence of sixth house bases in the outline of Vivek. Well, but we haven't done the interiors yet, so I was I was suspecting of putting like at least one or two of those houses as a sixth house base. But we could actually have um, I don't know something by the waterfront that would be cool. So the idea that I was running with is that maybe not the dissident priests, but there was. A faction of uh, individuals inside of Vivek, like the lower class, people who don't really know a lot, who are losing faith in the tribunal, but not necessarily like going so far as like the dissident priest. Like there, there would be a middle ground between uh, the people who are like really devout, like the temple and the ordinators and stuff, and there would be the people who like believe heretical beliefs. As according to the um, the temple, but then there would be like this this kind of um, people in the middle that are kind of being swayed one way or the other, you know. Like uh, there there would be doubt within the city. That's the kind of like area that I would kind of want to explore. With the tribunal's loss of Sunder and Keening, and with the diminishing resources of Vivek Amalexia and so the Sil, Degas Ur believes that he has permanently gained a decisive strategic advantage. On the mortal timescale, the battle may last for centuries, but the outcome is not in doubt, and a Kulikon may be a device for dramatically reducing the timescale for a decisive victory. The myth of dynamic invincibility of the Emperor and the Empire has long been unequivocal, uh, unquantifiable, and intimidating. Huh. and intimidating threat, but recent rumors of unrest in Cyrodiil, of the Emperor's failing health, and the unsettled questions of the succession have diminished the scale of that threat. It's interesting to bring that up, considering we know how he he, uh, he dies in the end. 
Nonetheless, the revelation that the Nerevarine is a pawn of Imperial intelligence, handpicked and sent to Moro and by the Emperor himself, may cause Dagoth or considerable anxiety. The Daedra represent no coherent obstacle to Dagoth or. Nonetheless, their personal abilities and their influence upon the fanatical followers is considerable. Their motives and actions obscure, and Dagoth or remains concerned about them. Yeah, you can tell that they were already thinking about Oblivion. I bet you there was concept art on the walls and stuff. The Incarnate represents Saint Nerevar, a mythic force that has previously defeated Dagoth Ur, and Dagoth Ur is obsessed with this threat. At the same time, Dagoth Ur knew Nerevar personally, knew that he was a mortal man with faults and weaknesses. Dagoth Ur may have some hope of seducing or negotiating with Nerevar's reincarnation. Further, when Nerevar and the Tribunal defeated Dagoth Ur, they were strong and allied. Now the Nerevar and the Temple are weak, opposed, and divided. Therefore, through the Nerevarine and the Tribunal, uh, therefore, though the Nerevarine and the Tribunal represent the most serious threat to Dagoth Ur's plans, he still has good reason to believe that this time he will prevail. A recent timescale of Dagoth Ur's activities. Much of the following timescale is based on interference from incomplete, our inference from incomplete information. Before the Second Era, 882, Dagoth Ur and his kin lie dreaming beneath the sills of Red Mountain. Second Era, 882. Dagoth Ur and his ash vampires awake refreshed and emerge from Lower Red Mountain into the Heart Chamber. Dagoth Ur ritually binds himself and his brethren as heart rites in a ritual of his own devising. First stages of construction of Second Numidium, conceived during the long sleep, are begun by heart rite and atronaut constructs in a chamber near the heart of Lorcan. Keeping the Second Numidium project a secret from the tri uh, tribunal is a high priority. Second Era, 882. The Tribunal arrived at Red Mountain for their annual ritual, bathing in the Heart's power. Dagoth Ur and Ash Vampires ambush the Tribunal. The Tribunes are driven away and are prevented from restoring themselves with Karenek's tools at the heart of Lurkin. Karenek's tools at the heart of Lurkin. Second Era, 882 through 883. Oh, no, sorry. Second Era, 882 through the Third Era, 417. Intermittent Tribunal Campaigns Assault Red Mountain. The Tribunal and supporting forces seek to force access to the Heart Chamber, but are repeatedly driven back. Degath Ur recruits sleepers and dreamers through the dream sendings. Cultists are recruited through the dream compulsions. Weaker cultists become corpus beasts. Stronger cultists, cultists advance through the stages towards the power of the ascended sleepers. Third Era, 400. Kogarun reoccupied by Degas Uthal and fortified as an advanced base for Sixth House operations. Blight storms more frequent and widespread. Soul sickness spreads in regions close to Red Mountain. Third Era, 410. Sixth House bases are found near Gnarmok and in waterfront areas of Vivek. Sixth House operatives exploit smuggling operations and communications to spread their influence among victims of unbalanced by Dagoth Ur's dream sendings. Okay, so now we're actually getting close to um close to present day, right? Because we're in the third era of 427, I think. I hope when they want it back to do not break my legs, wait, what do we do? A mysterious benefactor has given you a sum of 150 gold. Third Era 415. Small cells of the Sixth House cultists in every town in Vardenfell. Larger Sixth House operatives are concealed in remote dungeons where creatures are bred and cultists are trained for the coming struggle. Third Era 417. Almalexia and Sotasil lose the artifacts Keening and Sunder to Degas Ordros and Venom. 
Vivek rescues Almalexia and so the Sil, but failing to recover Keening and Sunder, the tribunal retreat from Red Mountain. In disorder, surviving Boy and Armager camp, uh, champions know the tribunal was forced to retreat, but do not know how serious a reversal the tribunal has suffered. The three tribunes return to their respective capitals to continue to perform their ritual functions. The tribunes continue to grow weaker and without access to the heart, and because of resources required to support the ghost fence, the inner circle of the temple priesthood has begun to suspect the tribunes have suffered serious from wounds and demoralization in the wake of reverses at Red Mountain, but do not recognize the scale of the problem. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, we're in 427. Third Era, 426 to 427. Campaign of Sixth House assassinations of prominent Imperial citizens and Halalu Imperial sympathizers. Sudden increase in number and seriousness of attacks by cultists and victims deranged by soul sickness. Noted with concern. Dagoth Ur can apparently perceive and communicate directly through his cultists. Sleepers and dreamers are often reported speaking as though with Dagoth Ur's voice and intention. Little is known about the features, scale, or stage of the completion of Akulakon, Second Numidium. No one has gained entrance to the Heart Chamber since Second Era 282. In Third Era 417, Canyon and Sunder were captured and may substantially aid in Akulakon's construction. I might need a drink after this. Yeah, there's nothing else here. <sighs> okay, so Battle at Red Mountain and Nerevar at Red Mountain. I'm going to be right back. I need a drink because I'm doing all... Whoa. Yeah, I'll be right back and uh, we'll go ahead and figure out what happened at Red Mountain. BRB. Okay, so this is um, the two pages on the Battle of Red Mountain. I think this is where we're going to get the conflicting accounts. The Battle of Red Mountain and the Rise and Fall of the Tribunal. The following is a transcript of the words of Lord Vivek addressed to a dissident priest, Malar Omeyan. who confronted Vivek with the Ashlander traditions surrounding the Battle of Red Mountain, and with prophecies of the Naravarine, to unnamed magistrates of the Inquisition who joined Vivek in interrogating the dissident priests. Who can clearly recall the events of the distant past? But you have asked me to tell you, in my own words, the events surrounding the Battle of Red Mountain, the birth of the tribunal, and the prophecies of a Nerevar reborn. Here is what I can tell you. When the Chimer first abandoned the herds and tents of their nomadic ancestors and built the first great houses, we loved the Daedra and worshipped them as gods. But our brethren, brethren, the Drem, <laughs> but our brethren, the Dwemer, scorned the Daedra and mocked their foolish rituals. All right, take it easy, man. Hope you have a good night, sir. But our brethren, the Dwemer, scorned the Daedra and mocked our foolish rituals and preferred instead their gods of reason and logic. So the Chimer and the Dwemer were always at bitter war 
until the Nords came and invaded Rezdan. Rezdania. Rezdane. Okay. Only then did the Chimer and Dwemer put their strife put away their strife and join together to cast out the invaders. Once the Nords were driven out, General Nerevar of the Chimer and the great Dumbak of the Dwemer, who had come to love and respect one another, resolved to make peace between their peoples. In that time, I was but a junior counselor to Nerevar and Nerevar's queen, Almalexia, and his other favorite counselor, Sothasil. Really, Nerevar was... Nerevar and Almalexia were together, huh? Cool. So the Sil always doubted that such a peace might let long survive, given the bitter disputes between Chimer and Twimmer. But by negotiation and compromise, Nerevar and Dumek somehow managed to preserve a fragile peace. But when Dagoth Ur, Lord of House Dagoth, and trusted as a friend by both Nerevar and the Dwemer, brought us proof that High Engineer Kagrinak of the Dwemer had discovered the heart of Lorcan, and that he had learned how to tap in its powers, and was building a new god, a mockery of Chimer faith, and a fearsome weapon, we all urged Nerevar to make war on the dwarves and to destroy this threat to Chimer beliefs and security. Nerevar was troubled. He went to Dumak and asked if what Degath Ur said was true, but Kregnak, Kagrinak took great offense and when and asked whom Nerevar thought he was, that he might presume to judge the affairs of the Dwemer. Nerevar was further troubled and made pilgrimage to Holomayan, the sacred temple of Azura, and Azura confirmed that all that Dagoth Ur had said was indeed true, and that the creation of a new god of the Dwemer should be prevented at all costs. When Nerevar came back and told us what the godless, our goddess had said, we felt our judgments confirmed, and again counseled him to war. Chiding Nerevar for his naive trust in friendship and reminding Nerevar of his duty to protect the faith and the security of the Chimer against the impiety and dangerous ambitions of the Dwemer. Then Nerevar went back to Vardenfell one last time, hoping that negotiations and compromise might once again preserve the peace. But this time, the friends Nerevar and Dumek quarreled bitterly, and as a result, the Chimer and Dwemer went to war. The Dwemer were well defended by their fortresses at Red Mountain, but Nerevar's cunning drew most of Dumek's armies out into the field and pinned them there, while Nerevar, Dagoth Ur, and a small group of companions could make their way into the Heart Chamber by secret means. There, Nerevar and the Chimer King met with Dumak, the Dwarf King, and they both collapsed from grievous wounds and draining magics. With Dumak fallen and threatened by Dagoth Ur and others, Kagrinak turned his tools upon the heart, and Nerevar said he saw Kagrinak and all his Dwemer companions at once disappear from the world. In that instant, Dwemer everywhere disappeared without a trace, but Kagrinak's tools remained, and Degas Ur seized them. He carried them to Nerevar, saying, That fool Kagrinak has destroyed his own people with these things. We should destroy them right away, lest they fall into the wrong hands. But Nerevar was resolved to confer with his queen and his generals, who had foreseen that this war would come and whose counsel he would not ignore again. I will ask the tribunal what we shall do with them, for they have the wisdom in the past that I had not. Stay here, loyal Degath Ur, until I return. So Nerevar told Degath Ur to protect the duels and the heart chamber until he returned. Then Nerevar was carried to us, where we waited on the slopes of Red Mountain, and he told us all that had transpired under Red Mountain. What Nerevar had said was that 
the Dwemer had used special tools to turn their people into immortals, and that the heart of Lorcan held wondrous powers. Only later did we hear from others present that Dagoth Ur had thought the Dwemer destroyed, not made immortal, and no one knows for sure what really happened there. After hearing Nerevar, we gave our counsel as he requested proposing. We should preserve these tools in trust for the welfare of the Chimer people. And who knows, perhaps the Dwemer are not gone forever, but merely transported to some distant realm from which they may someday return to threaten our security once again. Therefore, we need to keep these tools to study them and their principles so that we may have so that we may be safe in future generations. And though Nerevar voiced his grave misgivings, he was willing to be ruled by our council, under one condition, that we all together should swear a solemn oath upon Azura that the tools would never be used in profane manner that the Dwemer had intended. We all readily agreed and swore solemn oaths at Nerevar's dictation. So, then we went with Nerevar back into Red Mountain, and met with Nagath Ur. Nagath Ur refused to deliver the tools to us, saying they were dangerous, and we could not touch them. Nagath Ur seemed to be irrational, insisting that only he could be trusted with the tools, and then we guessed that he had somehow been affected by his handling of the tools. But now I feel sure that he had privately learned the powers of the tools, and had, in some confused way, decided he must have them for himself. Then Nerevar, our guard, and our guard resorted to force to secure the tools. Somehow, Degas Ur and his retainers escaped. But we gained the tools and delivered them to Sothisil for study and safekeeping. For some years, we kept the oaths we swore to Azura with Nerevar, but during that time, in secret, Sothisil must have studied the tools and divined their mysteries. And at last he came to, with us with a vision of a new world of peace, with justice and honor for nobles, and health and prosperity for the commoners, with the tribunal as immortal patrons and guides, and, and deciding, or dictating, and dictating ourselves to this vision of a better world, or dedicating, I'm sorry, and dedicating ourselves to this vision of a better world, we made a pilgrimage to Red Mountain and transformed ourselves with the power of Kagrinax tools. And no sooner had we completed our rituals and begun to discover our newfound powers, the Daedra Lord Azura appeared and cursed us for our forsworn oaths. By her power of prophecy, she assured us that her champion, Nerevar, true to his oath, would return to punish us for our uh, perfidy, and to make sure such profane knowledge might never again be used to mock and defy the will of the gods. But so the Sil said to her, the old gods are cruel and arbitrary, and distant from the hopes and fears of Myrrh. Your age is past. We are the new gods born of the flesh, and wise and caring of the needs of our people. Spare us your threats and chidings. Inconsistent spirit, we are bold and fresh, and we do not fear you. And then, in that moment, all Chimer were changed into Dunmer, and that our skins turned ashen and our eyes into fire. Of course, we only knew at that time that this had happened to us, but Azura said, This is not my act, but your act. You have chosen your fate, and the fate of your people, and all the Dunmer shall share your fate. From now until the end of time, you think yourselves gods, but you are blind, and all this is darkness. And Azura left us alone, in darkness, and we were all afraid. But we put on brave faces and went forth from Red Mountain to build the new world of our dreams. And the new world we shaped was glorious and generous, and the worshippers of 
Dunmer fervent and grateful. The Dunmer were at first afraid of their new faces, but Sothisil spoke to them, saying that it was not a curse, but a blessing, a sign that their changed natures, a sign of their changed natures, and a sign that the special favor they might enjoy as new myrrh. No longer barbarians trembling before ghosts and spirits, but civilized myrrh, speaking directly to their immortal friends and patrons. The three faces of the tribunal. And we were all inspired by Sothisil's speech and vision and took to heart. And over time, we crafted the customs and institutions of a just and honorable society. And the land of Resdane knew millennia of peace, equity, and prosperity unknown to the other savage races. But beneath Red Mountain, Dagoth Ur had survived, and even as the light of our bold new world shined ever more brightly, beneath Red Mountain the darkness gathered, a darkness that was so close to kin to the bright light that Sothisil coaxed from the heart of Lorcan. With the tools of Kagrinak, as the darkness grew, we fought it, and crafted walls to confine it, but we never could destroy it. For the source of the darkness was the same source as the source of our own divine inspiration. And in these later days of Morrowind, reduced to a subjugated province of the eastern west, uh, reduced to a subjugated province of the Western Empire, as the glory of the temple fades and the dark tide rise from Red Mountain, we are reminded of Azura and her promised champion's return. We have waited, blind and in darkness, mere shadows drained of our ardent vision, in shame of our folly. We fear our judgment and in hope of our deliverance. We do not know if the outlander claiming to fulfill the prophecies of the Naravarine is our old companion Nerevar reborn, or a pawn of the Emperor, or a cat spa of Azura, or some simple twist of fate. But we insist you adhere to temple doctrine and conform the strictures dividing the, the hierogrypha from the apogrypha that you may not speak with and that which must not be spoken openly. Act as a dutiful priest should, in accordance with your vows of obedience to the canons and the archcanons, and all will be forgiven. Defy me, and you will know what it is to stand against a god. Vivek. Okay, three down, one to go. One sec, guys. Cool. Nerevar at Red Mountain. Last one. Nerevar at Red Mountain. The following is from the Apogrypha. Ah, uh, Apographa. Yeah, okay. The following is from the Apographa, the hidden writings of the Tribunal Temple. It is a scholarly retelling of a tradition transmitted through the Ashlanders concerning the Battle of Red Mountain and subsequent events. The Ashlanders associate this tale with the telling of Alandro Sul a shield champion of Nerevar, who came to live among the Ashlanders after the death of Nerevar and during the ascension of the tribunal. There are many varied treatments of this story, but the primary elements are consistent throughout the tradition. The murder of Nerevar, the tragic fate of Dagoth Ur, and the profane sources of the tribunal's divine power are denied by temple doctrine as ignorant Ashlander superstition and not widely known among civilized Dunmer. Resdane, present-day Morrowind, was contested ground between two very different types of Mur, the Chimer, who worshipped Daedra, and the Dwemer, who worshipped a profane and secret power. These two people warred 
with each other constantly until their lands were invaded by a young, vibrant, and volatile alien culture, the Nords. Two heroes from the Chimer and one from the Dwemer, Lord Inderil Nerevar, Dumag Dwarf Orc, made peace between their people, and together ousted the alien invaders. Then, these two heroes worked long and hard to maintain that peace thereafter, through their counselors, thought it, uh, though their th counselors thought it could not last, or worse, that it shouldn't, Nerevar's queen and his generals, Almalexia, Sothisil, Vivek, told him to reclaim all Rizdain all Resdane for his own, but Nerevar would not listen, for he remembered his friendship with Dumak. There would be only peace. Until Dagoth Ur arrived, House Dagoth had discovered the source of the profane and secret power of the Dwemer, the legendary heart of Lurkin, which Dumak's people had used to make themselves immortal and beyond the measure of the gods. In fact, one of their high priests Kagrinak was building a new god so that the Dwemer could claim Resdane for their own. The tribunal urged Nerevar again to make war on the dwarves. Nerevar was troubled. He went to Dumak, his friend of old, and asked if what Dagoth Ur said was true. But Kagrinak and the other high priests of the Dunmer, or other high priests of the Dwemer, had kept their new god secret from their king, and Dumak said to the Dwemer were innocent of any wrongdoing. Nerevar was troubled again and made pilgrimage to Holomayan, the sacred temple of Azura, who confirmed that all that Dagoth Moore said was indeed true, and that the new god of the Dwemer should be destroyed for the safety of not only Resdane, but for the whole world. When Nerevar went back and told his tribunal what the goddess had said, his queen and generals felt themselves proved all right, and again counseled him to war. There were reasons that the Dwemer and Chimer hated each other forever. Finally, Nerevar, angered that his friend Dumak would lie to him, went back to Vartenfell, this time the Chimer king was arrayed in armies and armor and had his hosts around him, and he spoke harshly to Dumak Dwarf Orc, King of Red Mountain. You must give up your worship of the heart of Lurkin, or I shall forget our friendship and the deeds that we were accomplished in its name. And Dumak, who still knew nothing of Kagrinak's new god, but proud and protective as ever of his people said, We shall not relinquish that which has been our way for years beyond reckoning. Just as the Chimer will not relinquish their ties to the Lord and Ladies of Oblivion. And to come at my door in this way, arrayed in arms and armor, with your hosts around you, tells me that you have already forgotten our friendship. Stand down, my sweet Nirabar, or I swear by the fifteen and one golden tones, I shall kill you and all your people. And so the Chimer and Dwemer went to war. The Dwemer were well defended by their fortresses at Red Mountain, but the bravery and cleverness of Nerevar's queen and the generals drew most of Dumak's armies out into the field and kept him there, so that Nerevar and Dagoth Ur could make their way into the heart chamber by secret means. There, Nerevar met Dumak the Dwarf King, and they both fell from grievous wounds. Dagoth Ur slew Kagrinak and took the tools of the Dwemer. Used to tap the power of the heart, he went to his dying lord Nerevar and asked him what to do with these tools, and Nerevar summoned Azor again, and she showed them how to use the tools to separate the power of the heart from the Dwemer people. And on the fields, the tribunal and their armies watched as the Dwemer turned into dust around them, as their stolen immortality was taken away. Back in Red Mountain, Nerevar told Dagoth Ur to protect these tools, and the Heart of Chamber Intel returned. 
Dagoth Ur said, but shouldn't we destroy these tools at once, so that they might never be used for evil again? But Nerevar was confused by his words and his sorrow, for he still loved Dumak and the Dwemer people, and so went to the fields outside of Red Mountain to confer with his queen and his generals, who had foreseen that this war, that this war would come and whose counsel he would not ignore again. I will ask the tribunal what we shall do with them, for they have wisdom in the past that I had not. Stay here, loyal Dagoth Ur, until I return. Then Nerevar told his queen and generals all that had transpired under Red Mountain, and how the Dwemer had used special tools to turn their people into immortals, and the wondrous power of the heart of Lorcan. The tribunal decided that the Chimer should learn how to use this power so that Nerevar might claim Resdane and the world for their people. Nerevar did not expect or want this, so he asked his queen and generals to help him summon Azura yet again for her guidance. But the tribunal had become greedy, as greedy as Ker uh, Keregnak upon hearing of the power of the heart. They coveted it. They made ritual as if to summon Azura as Nerevar wanted, but Almalexia used poisonous candles, and Sothasil used poisoned robes, and Vivek used poisoned invocations. Nerevar was murdered. Then Azura came forth, anyway, and cursed the tribunal for their foul deeds. She told them that she would use her powers over dusk and dawn to make sure Nerevar would come back and make things right again. But the tribunal laughed at her and said that soon they would be gods themselves, and that the Chimer people would forget their old ways of worship. And Azura knew this would be true, and that it would take a long time before her power might bring back Nerevar. What you have done here today is foul beyond measure, and you will grow to regret it, for the lives of gods are not what mortals think, and matters that weigh only years to mortals weigh on gods forever. And so that they might know forever their wicked deeds, Azura changed the Chimer into Dunmer and their skin turned ashen, and their eyes into fire. Let this mark remind you of your true selves, who, like ghouls, fed on the nobility, heroism, and trust of their king. And then the tribunal went to Red Mountain, and met with Dagoth Ur. Dagoth Ur saw what had been done, for his skin had been changed as well, and he tried to avenge the death of Nerevar, but to no avail. He was driven off and thought dead. The tribunal found the tools he had been guarding, and, through study of Kregnex methods, or Kagrinex methods, turned themselves into gods. For thousands of years, after their apotheosis, the tribunal are still the gods of Morrowind, and the old ways of worship are remembered only by a few, and the murder of Nerevar is known to fewer. But his queen and generals still fear his return, for the words of Azura lingering long as they see the mark of her curse on their people every day. Wow, okay. Let's try again, shall we? I propose to give you an artifact called Wraith God. You may accept the gift, then do with it as you will. I propose that you accept the responsibility of defeating Dagoth Ur and swear in an oath to that effect. I may give your oath. You may give your oath, then keep it or break it as you like. First, will you accept Wraith God as a gift? Good. Sensible of you. 
And now, will you give your oath before all gods and men, before all spirits visible and invisible, before my honor and your honor, to dedicate yourself and Wraithguard to defeat the destruction of Dagoth's Ur, and the preservation of Morrowind and its people? A sensible response. Alas, I am not looking for someone sensible. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that you will not find Wraithguard much use to you, for without your oath I shall not teach you how to use it. That concludes our interview. I hope it has not been an inconvenience. And if you change your mind, come back. So I'm wondering where exactly Wraithguard is in my inventory. I don't even know what it is. Well, let's see. What is the uptime, guys? Three hours, one minute, and 34 seconds. I don't have it, do I? Yeah, he didn't give it to me. All right, well. Oh, I don't know. Sure. I mean, I want to continue the main quest. That's the thing. And if I can't get Wraithguard any other way, I might as well just, um... Might as well. Tell you what, though. We'll save it right here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Not very sensible, but very good. I was hoping for someone who would have no hesitations about making such an oath. You will now have a brief, momentary sensation of time passing. Don't be alarmed. You are being taken out of time in order to prevent the unpleasant experience of learning how to use Wraithguard. It will be over before... There's a brief sensation of motion in total darkness, floating, but without a sense of weight or direction. You know it. Now I will notify the temple that you are our champion. There shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests. I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. We have time for questions if you like, or you may leave if I should wish. But I think there are at least two things you ought to know before you leave. How to use Wraithguard, and how to defeat Dagoth Ur. There's technically two Wraithguards in the game? Wow. That would have been fun. <laughs> oh well, we'll, do, we'll have to do it next time. Leave it to Bethesda, like ancient Bethesda, to give you like multiple ways to get to the end. Okay. To defeat Degoth Ur, go to Red Mountain to recover the artifact hammer Sunder from Gate Citadel Veminal. Then recover the artifact blade Keening from Gate Citadel Ordrosol. Then proceed with Wraithguard, Sunder, and Keening to the Citadel of Degoth Ur. Within the Citadel, find the Heart of Lurkin. Use the three artifacts to sever Degoth Ur's connection to the heart and he will be destroyed, and the blight ended on Morrowind. It's the main way you play now because you can't stand the Ashlander quest. To destroy Dagoth Ur, you must sever his connection with the heart of Lorcan. To do this, strike the heart with the artifact- okay. They already like- no, 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 okay. Strike the heart with the- Artifact, hammer sunder once, then strike the heart one more time. Uh, once within... Wow, okay, my eyes are going right now. Sorry, guys. Once, then strike the heart 
more than once with the artifact blade keening. You must wear Wraithguard because you cannot handle either Sunder or Keening unless you are wearing Wraithguard. That is the short, simple explanation. Here is the long, detailed explanation written down for your convenience. Read it, study it, commit it to memory. Reading the game, yeah. Sorry, my eyes are kind of going, so I'm probably going to have to... If there is much more reading to do, I can't... I'm going to have to end it here. But I'll tell you what, if there is like a, um, a campaign or something, if there's something that can hit, we'll keep on going. Even with accepting the one from Vivek, you can still attain the other one. Okay, so, um, try Red Mountain. In my library, I have made available two conflicting accounts of the events of Red Mountain, my own true accounts, and the other false accounts common among Ashlanders. Preserved in the Apographa, I don't care whether you believe my account or not, and leave it up to you to judge which is true. Okay, so let's counsel? Counsel. I'm pretty sure that what he's going to say is exactly what we read out. But let's um let's listen to it anyway. You need to know where is Dagoth Ur? What are Dagoth Ur's plans? Who are Dagoth Ur's servants? Who is Dagoth Ur? What are Dagoth Ur's powers? What is known about Dagoth Ur's defenses? How I can prepare for battle against Dagoth Ur, and who can help? Okay. Dagoth Ur has never ventured out of the Heart Chamber. It is placed under Red Mountain, where the heart of Lorcan lies. It is there, or nearby, that he is constructing his new god, Akulagon, also known as the Second Numidium. I actually just found out there's a strategy guide out there for Morrowind, never knew that. Yeah, it's true, it's called the Morrowind Prophecies, if I remember correctly. You could probably use it for this game. In fact, you could probably find an online copy, that's what I would do. And then stick that on an iPad so you have it indexed. Not a bad idea. Oh, come on, you can do it, RP text. If I'm going to be reading, I need to at least put this up here. I think after this conversation, though, um... Yeah. I'll take us worst plans. It summarizes what we know or suspect. You have a copy. It's also in my library. Okay, cool. Servants. Chief among his servants are his seven brothers. The Ash Vampires. Powerful. Heartrites and cunning sorcerers of all. These creatures appear to die, but always are revered at the heart, or revived at the heart. Somehow Dagoth Ur has conferred some portion of his immortality upon them, or perhaps they sustain themselves through more conventional sorceries. Ah, uh, Dagoth Ur's powers? He is able to send his mind into the dreams of susceptible victims across vast distances. The victims are either swayed by his compulsions or driven mad. He also seems nearly invulnerable to physical and magical harm. His flesh, and the flesh of his followers, evolves towards a mutable, magical form. Dagoth Ur is the highest rank, and the highest ranks can control the discorded manifestations of their flesh. Lower ranks lose control of their bodies and become mindless corpus monsters. It's actually included in the PDF form when you buy the GOG version. Cool. I have the GOG version. Okay. Dagoth Ur's defenses. 
Confer with the buoyant armagers or the ordinators garrisoning in Ghost Gate for the latest information about defenses of the citadels of Degoth Ur and his heart right kin. Prepare for war. Beyond the ghost fence, there is no safe places. No allies. Stockpile resources. Plan for retreat and replenishment. Quest for artifacts of power. Ordinators and buoyant armagers stationed to Ghostgate have the most practical knowledge of the nightmare world within Ghostgate. Seek them in my name for counsel and aid. Dagoth Ur is the former lord, high counselor of House Dagoth. He was of Lord Nerevar's generation, older than we, and a mighty sorcerer and enchanted in life. In his sustained shadow, immortality, he appears to be a highly intelligent, severely deluded, immortal monster with unparalleled supernatural abilities. He appears by turns lucid and deranged, compassionate and bestial, profoundly wise and profoundly disordered. In short, he is like a mad god. Yeah, we have unfinished business. I'll take care of Dagoth Ur, but I'm killing your ass. Okay, so. In LGR, in his video, showed a strategy book in his Morrowind review. Since most people in the early 2000s did not have internet service at the time, or didn't have a PC. Depends on each person. Wow, okay, so it feels like I've been talking for like two hours straight. Which actually might be the case. So, here is my plan. We are gonna go to- actually, you know what? Screw that. I wanna go ahead and stock up on supplies first. We are going to go to Red Mountain. Tomorrow. Today, we're gonna go ahead and go all the way to Coast Gate, which I have not explored yet, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to get there. Yeah, you hit the huge lore dump within the game. Normally, that kind of stuff is staggered, you know? Not that I'm complaining. Does she not have a Restore Magicka? That kind of blows. Uh, did I look at Wraith Guard yet? I have not. What is Wraith Guard anyway? Where you at? Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Value is 500,000. You know what's funny about these values? It's like nobody in the game even has that. Seriously, you can buy your own canton with that much. Shield, 10 points on Resist basically anything, 10 points. Like, I don't need blight disease resistance. God damn, man. So what is that? Is that a... It looks like a gauntlet. You know, today was the day I was going to take it easy. Today was the day that I was going to, like, stop freaking talking for a while. Because like, yesterday I spoke for, like, maybe 13 hours straight. Because after I did a stream, I was on a conference call. And then after that, I, uh, I did another stream. Somehow that didn't kind of work out. It's super rare. It's the only of its kind. Uh, so what is this? Left or right? Because we do have some pretty swanky... Well, I don't know, let's see here. 
Actually, I'm gonna save. Blink 113. That's probably a really good idea. Okay, so it's on the right. Fortify strength, 20 points. Oh man, look at that. Trouble is, like, look at our um, strength now. So we're gonna... That nearly makes us over encumbered. Okay, so is anybody out there can they can point me to the Its purpose is to protect you whilst using Keening and Sunder, yeah. I'm assuming that you have to wear it if you equip either one of those weapons. I want to get some more Restore Magicka Potions, and I think that the best place to do that would be inside of the Telvanni Canton. Yeah, what the hell am I doing? I can just... Um, well, it doesn't matter, does it? Glass is really expensive. You can't sell it anywhere. Sorry, don't spend time on Twitch chat much other than this stream. Well, I'm glad you went ahead and uh, stopped by, though. My point was, yeah, it's so expensive, no one can afford it, because it's basically the Ark of the Covenant or something. Yeah. It literally is, like, priceless. I need to find somebody who has, like, a, a serious amount of gold that I can just, like, start... ...selling things off to. You know what would be really nice? If I could mark two locations. I don't know how much of a cheat that would feel like, though. Like, being able to mark locations is a very... It's a limited resource, right? So you have to think it through. If you had more than one mark that you um, could place down, say what you want or go away. Ooh, okay. Fire damage. Levitate. Not what I need. Also, not what I need. Well, he's got only like 850 gold. What I really want right now is potions that restore Magicka. Come I think on, we need huh? to visit some sort of um, alchemist. <laughs> hey, speak of the devil. There we go. It is out or hit the road. So, Magicka. Is that the only one? Seriously? I think that's the only Restore Magicka potion that she has. That's not nice. So this is how I buy and sell things from the game. So you take a bunch of that stuff to a merchant and sell all your crap over to them over the course of time. And then with something really expensive like a glass weapon or something, you sell that to them while taking back some of the, all the other stuff they sold in the past. Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. Might just chim my way there, though. That could probably work. Um, potion of water breathing? That's actually not a bad thing to get. 
Yeah, okay. Because I don't know if there's going to be any kind of water dungeons in the future. So I tell you what, there is something that I want to do. Potion of Light. We'll take this too. Because I think that's probably... Worth getting. Man, I want to go ahead and... Yeah, her, like this dude's stock does not resupply. Like, I'd have to wait a couple days, and I don't want to. So, sorcerer. Talk too much out that day. Ah, fine. Also, a creeper. The scamp is another good trader. Well, I'm. I am totally down with trading with Creeper, but I don't want anybody to tell me where he is. Because I feel like if I if I find him organically, fine, sure, cool. We found one of the other uh, scamps in the game on our own. Uh, you could just, uh, it would be harder to use a second mark skill and it's harder to use a third one still. Well, I mean, the reason why I bring this up is because I know that there is a mod out there that lets you do more than one mark spell. But I feel like a really big strategic component of the game is being only limited to one kind of mark spell. Like, only one, one at a time. Same goes for the drunken mud crab. Oh yeah, there is a mud crab merchant in here, isn't there? No idea where the hell he is. We've done a fair amount of exploring though. Let me go ahead and pull this up. So, like, we've been on the stream for quite a while, and... I think that we've done a fair amount of exploring. Look at how much of that map we still haven't covered it. We haven't even touched. And this is like basically us avoiding all kinds of fast travel too. It makes me wonder what kind of quests and everything are out there in the wilderness. That's impressive, man. I have a world this big. I know that I give Bethesda sometimes a lot of grief for... Uh, how do you say? Not, not putting enough detail into their environments, but man, that is actually a really big place to fill. I can tell you that you have been close to both the Drunken Mud Crab and the Creeper. Just hope you don't kill the Mud Crab because it's super easy to do. Yeah, now that I stop and think about it, I have been killing a bunch of Mud Crabs. Like, over and over and over and over again. Without even, like, trying to talk to them. Probably not wise. <laughs> Probably not. There's nothing to signify that he's the one. Ooh. How do you know that Mudcrab is a he? He could be a she. Where would you like to go? There's a fair question. We're gonna get about Mora. Somehow, Morrowind feels bigger. It's a lot to do with view distance as well. Well, we have a, a view distance mod, too, on here. Sure, for the vanilla stuff, that's that's a good point. But this is only stretching about three cells. Although, I don't know if Distant Land is working correctly not or not anymore. Because I'm running a beta version of it, and it feels a little wonky right now. I think it's working, though. Did you just assume? Oh, 
Oh, I'm getting tired, man. I think I'm probably going to pack it in right now. Yeah. Actually, no, there is one other thing that I want to do before Hail we... Dunmer. Before we head off. There was a quest for the Redoran that we wanted to... My time is precious, so make it quick. We wanted to take care of him. We just weren't high level enough. I think we're pretty high level at this point. We have a god abjugating his power in deference to us, so I think that counts. Where would you like to I think go? the size of Ivan Martinfell also is helped by the slow speed you run. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have a mod. I, once again, I have a mod that fixes that, or changes that. But even still, I mean, this is not running very fast. And this is after, like, we've been putting a lot, a lot of uh, skill points, every single level, into speed. Does Sidonie not have a... No, they don't have a dock, do they? Okay, so we need to get up to here, I think. Which means we need to get, go to Hla'od first, and then take the ship up to Gnarmok. Not that big of a deal. Probably going to take us about five minutes to get there. Hardest part is not getting lost along the way. Do I have the Vivic Boss fight mod? I do not, sir. Slash ma'am. See? I just assumed right there. This is a mostly vanilla playthrough. Like the only things that the only big things that have added is things for distant land, for MGEXE, for like the code patch and stuff. And some various UI tweaks, but I'd say this is a vanilla-esque playthrough. That being said, like, next playthrough, I have no, um, problems installing a bunch of mods. In fact, I think that would be a fun thing to do. It's, sir. Wow, that is so much easier now that they have spells. Maybe the road should be more snaky in Oblivion than Skyrim. I hope in the next Elder Scrolls game, they have a greater variety of animals that don't try and kill you every five steps. I'm tired of wolves, man. I'm tired of wolves. I'm tired of cliff racers. It's just not a lot of fun, you know? Something I'm pretty tempted to do is to create a spell that gives us extra speed. You know, like a fortify 15 points or something like that. Nothing crazy. This looks like one of the best put together strategy guides I've ever seen. Wouldn't doubt it, man. Oh, come on! You know something that might actually make Cliff Racer spawns a little bit more fun? Having them be different sizes. Like, how cool would it be to fight a Cliff Racer that was like twice the size, or maybe half the size? Or maybe have like three of them that were smaller, and one of them that was like really huge? If you're going to be fighting so many of them, just like, I want to have some kind of variety there. So, Peter Bitt made an excellent, excellent uh, model for a Cliff Racer, and he also made an outstanding model for a Nyxhound as well. Nyxhound really creeped me the hell out. Cliff Racer looks beautiful, though.
See, the thing is, I don't want to get spoiled. Alright, so was it this place? I don't think so. I think we're in the wrong place, aren't we? Uh, it was Coal Cave, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. Which I might not. Maybe every critter should have their own game elements, like a rhino type mob not attacking you when you stand still. I was looking in Rogowski's stream a, stream a while back. Today, even. He's playing Dark Souls. I think he's playing the first one. And what's interesting to me is like every single encounter that he, he hits, the mechanics of those enemies seem very unique, right? When you're fighting one enemy, it's not the same thing as fighting another one as fighting another one. Like, you're learning their moves and then sort of dancing in accordance with them. Granted, there's a little bit more stabbing involved, but you get the picture. You talk too much out there. Okay, so I think it's this way. I don't know, I just, I, I would like to have a little bit more variety when... How many times have I killed a cliff racer these... Like, um, get kill count... Cliff racer... Yeah. I don't know. It's gotta be close to 200 by now. There it is. Did I clear this place out? Okay, I did. So, where the hell? Oh, wow. Look at my fatigue, man. Bothersome creature. The Daedric weapon actually goes ahead and knocks that down quite a bit. I gotta be... I gotta be aware of that. Ardon 68? Yeah. Helping out the cliff racers there? I can dig it. Damn. Alright, so we're gonna go up to cool. We're gonna pop over to... Level 2 cool. Okay, they got a Silt Strider, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there it is. Pop over to Old Rune and figure out what the hell is going on with that uh, quest line for the Redoran. Rune, there we go. We make a special trip just for you. Say I can imagine a Dark Souls approach working. It would be like you're actually learning the patterns of different animals and how to hunt them. Just anything to make the, the combat feel a little bit more involved. Get out of my way. 
I suppose I could check out the journal, but like this is faster. Okay, so you can find him in the Caverns of Milk on the Aldrun Caldera Road, west of Aldrun. True crossroads marked by signposts are very close to one another. To reach Milk, head west from Nissa's sign on the westmost signpost and watch right for a north branching path to Milk. Oh, okay, I know what's going on now. I know what's going on. Like, this is the quest line that had, um... Right. We have to rescue that girl from Telfir. Before we do anything else. And since we don't have a way to unlock a hundred, um, point door... Okay, well, I guess that means that we are just going to have to go to Ghostgate then. And I think that's where we're going to end the stream. We're going to we're going to head to Ghostgate. I think it's this direction. I'm just going to follow the Yeah, follow the path. And we shall make our way there. Well, we do, but you have to sell some stuff. What do I have to sell? I mean, I don't plan on looting a bunch of stuff. Actually, you know what might be good? I can totally drop off a lot of this stuff to clear my inventory. Not necessarily because it's it's it weighs a lot or whatever, but like I want to have a, a clean interface when I'm walking there. So we'll drop off a bunch of stuff in Belmora. Well, we do. Oh, you're talking about like, um, yeah. Yeah, I get you. We do have enough gold for the 100, um, open 100 amulet. That would mean going to Mournhold, though, it sounds like. Which I'm down for. I'm having fun. I think we're probably going to do that in stages, though. He's got 2,000. Excellent. Thor's Hand 11, thank you so much for the host, man. We are kind of wrapping things up here at the moment. What should we sell to this guy? That's a good question. Uh, the Enchanter in Mornhold is a nice place to visit for goodies, too. I've actually walked around Mornhold a bit, but I've never done any of the quests. Restore Magicka. Okay, cool. So I actually do have that. Yeah, I'm going to drop most of these things to... Uh, what brings you here, friend? To Caius' place. Don't Save press your awake. Awake. Our honor, honor is risen. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. You seek to challenge me. I think anything that we're going to loot from now on, we're just going to go ahead and sell. That's my plan.
Fortify Magicka 20. That's actually not a bad thing to... Detect Animal 150 points. That's not bad. Uh, Mornhold has some of the most OP items in the game. Well, Mornhold was designed to be played after the main quest, I believe, right? I don't think we need this one anymore. So we have the chameleon amulet. Resist paralysis, 10% on self. I, I don't think that's going to be very helpful to us. Telekinesis. Uh, is telekinesis any good it, unless you're stealing stuff? Like, does, does it have any kind of other purpose besides that? Fortify Magicka, 20 points on self. That's actually not bad. Ooh, okay. I like it. I like it. Rook, are you in need of a bigger house? Like, as in ones that are in the base game, not in mods? Yes, I am in need of a bigger house. Look at this place. It's a mess. So what does sound do anyway? Sound 50 points for 20 seconds on touch. I, I have no idea. Okay, I think we can get rid of Kaya's stuff too. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. And I'm going to leave the Endril boots for the moment. I don't know, what's what's the armor rating? 90 as opposed to... 85? Yeah, we'll leave the Ebony stuff here because this is much... It's 5 points less, but it's also only 18. I don't need two of these things. Can I tell you um, of... Sorry, let me, let me... Telekinesis is the best magic trap disarmor in the game. Magic trap disarmor? Okay. I will go ahead and keep it if you say it's a good thing. Yeah, that's a uh, CZ, okay. Amulet Mark of Shadow? I don't need the spell. Or, uh, I don't need this. What is this? This is... A ring, right? I feel, okay, here's what I want to do, and I don't know if we can do this or not. I feel like I, we should create an enchantment. Ooh, what's the, what's the same? Mark on self. I don't want. I don't need this. Okay, so we've got an exquisite amulet. We have a grand soul gem. I want to get some magicka. I want that to be like a constant effect. Okay, I think that's pretty good, right? 
can I tell you of one here in Belmora that is decent? All you have to do is get it is to pick open the door. There's even a small quest involved. They're pretty cool, like the large machine. Well, what are you talking about, man? Um, like a, like a new house or? I'm not entirely following you here. Okay, I don't think we need the arts cannon anymore. Let's um, let's pop that back in. Note from the arch cannon. Public notice. And I think we can well. Nerevar at Red Mountain. Battle of Red Mountain. Plan to defeat okay, and then this one here. That's basically the only note that we need. Okay, and then we can put the the engraved ring of healing back here. I don't think we need that one anymore. So, cure poison, it's good. Chameleon, that one's good too. Fortify health, ring of the Hortator. Telekinesis, detect animal, levitate, and water breathing. Okay, so probably want want two things here. I, I want to go ahead and get some enchantment that helps with health, and I want to get some enchantment that helps with magic too. Go ahead. We're becoming more and more like a, a mage. Like a battle mage as time goes on, and so just having this 54 is points is encounter. just not. Welcome. Not really gonna do it. Greater soul gem at 6,000. Um, is there something that I can give her in return? Uh, yeah, it's a house, huh? Back in the day when I used to basically live in this game in the Xbox, I would find out where each and every house was in the game. That was either free to live in or easy to live in. I know, of, I know that there's one house in like, or not house, but there's a there's a bed in Vivic instead of the. Oh, I want to say it's the Arena Canton. I need a fortify. Is it fortify Magica? Is that what it is? Fortify Magicka. Okay, so that's what I need. Meaning I need to learn the spell first. When you all play Morrowind, what is the first the item you get? Mine's usually the Amulet of Shadows. Either. Um, uh, I don't know. It is a fair question. I can't remember the first thing that I got. Yeah, those are all bound stuff.
Yeah, technically it would be the Fargoth's ring. That's a that's a good point. Cure poison for one second on stuff. We already have something that works for that. Okay, stupid question, guys. Where do I have to go to get a Fortify Magicka spell? Like, where do you guys go? Is it a Telvanni thing? Do we, can I do it here in Balmora? Fortify Magicka. Is it necessary that you speak with me? Alright, let me just double check up here. I don't think you're gonna... yeah. Rude. My time is precious, so make it clear. What say you? There's no Fortify Magicka spells in the game, huh? Really? Well then how are you supposed to, um, enchant items? So that they, like, um, yeah, I got the belt of the Hortator. Can I disenchant that and learn that spell? Because that would be super useful. All right. Well, as that is the case, I think what I'm going to do is to put a mark spell next to one of these temples. So that if I ever get overburdened again with stuff. So this is... I need to get the intervention one, the Amsivi intervention. There it is. Ah, uh, I'm City Restoration. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna mark this place. And then... Don't you sell potions? I think you sell potions. Not a ton of restore strengths though that I'm seeing. One of these days I want to... Cure Paralysis. Probably a good thing to pick up. All right, good enough. Good enough. <sighs> so, let me ask you guys this. In comparison to the main quest, what do you think is more fun? Is is it Tribunal? Is it the Solstheim quest? Or is it the main quest in, um... You can ride. In, like, OG I Vanilla. You can ride. No expansions. Oh, what happened? I did a bad thing. Oh, <laughs> what did I do? Okay, so I had this belt on. 
And then I went for Amsivi Restoration. Does that mean that I no longer get that extra buff? Guys, help me out here. Did I screw up royally? Save this as blink. And one fourth. Can you not restore while you're um you're fortified? Does that screw things up? Okay, so I here's the thing. I have a belt of the Horus Horror, right? And that gives a Fortify Magicka of 20 points on self. Okay. Shouldn't that be up to like 70 or something? Like for the maximum amount that I can, uh, I can use, or does it just immediately give me twenty magic? Like I'm not understanding how that uh, that mechanic works. You see. I thought Fortify raised your maximum magicka pool. Like, or your mag maximum health or maximum fatigue or maximum uh, magicka. Isn't that what Fortify does? Let's see what. Let's um. I don't know. I'm a little confused right now. Let's let's go to the the um fighters guild. Rest so that our magicka pool is all the way up again. Great, there's something that's listening. gonna attack. From where do you hail? Oh, come on, where is this guy? There you are. And then if I put the belt back on now. Yeah, it like raises my maximum magical pool, but like it's it's still like um It's still at 54. You see what's going on? I Alright, whatever. I am confused, but we can roll with it. I just want to get to Ghost Gate, and then that is a good place to end the stream. So, if you sleep now, does it increase it? Good question. Nope, it is still at 54 and uh, 
74. So I don't know, man. Like, so confused about that. Freaking cliff racers, come on. You know, it's funny, they always say that St. Jude was the one who killed all the cliff racers. I haven't seen him out here once. You would think. I want whatever that'll work my theory is just he took the credit just took the credit yeah Ooh, hello What's this place anyway? It's probably part of a quest chain. Out of curiosity, what is the the commands that they have to give to get the counter the amount of um enemies that I've killed. Like, what's that counter? I'm guessing it's north of 200 by now. At least we can one-shot him now. Like when we were first starting, like, a long, long, long time ago. It took us forever. Next stream, man. Next stream, if we do another one, I am going to go ahead and put in a Cliff Racer kill counter. So every time that we kill one of these things, you guys can uh, update it. Because I am honestly curious as hell. Actually, Hunter's Achievements, it's amazing. Can you pop me a link? Say what you want or go away. I will definitely give it a look. We're watching you, Scout. I don't have a lot of patience for questions out there. Whatever you're looking ah, for, I'm simple. sure I don't know how to find it. Whatever you're looking for, I'm sure I don't know how to find it. I don't suppose there's anybody here that sells a lot of, or has a lot of gold. And that buys armor and stuff. There's a point armagers. I don't know, you're all the way on the frontier. 1100, or 1300 isn't bad. Thanks, I will totally check that out later. Uh, I'm gonna take some torches. I'm 
Dwemer Coherer. Interesting. Precede you, Outlander. I've heard Any time now. You. What a piece of luck. I'm an old Legion veteran. As old as the poor old Emperor, bless his soul. I'm too old for campaigning. I came this far to look at hell. But I can't go any further than this. I'd take it kindly if you'd carry this lucky old coin with you. Were you to go to Dagoth Ur. Sort of a token of the tough young hero I used to be. Would you do that for me? Uh, would you do that for an old man? Yeah, why not? Very kind of you, here's the coin. Had it with me a long time. And it's always brought me luck. But I have no more use of it. And I'd like to pass it to somebody younger. Somebody going places I can't anymore. Your generation's sharper. Of history. Uh, an engine of destiny. That coin will bring you luck on the mountain. I promise. For emperor and empire, as we say in the legions. Go with Kinnereth. All right, take it easy, man. That's supposed to be Ty Receptum? Seriously? Old man's lucky coin. Well, let's talk to him a little bit more. Good luck on the mountain. Go with Kinnereth. And don't forget my old lucky coin. The Emperor's getting old. Don't know how much longer he'll hang on. So, is the whole Empire, for that matter, getting old, that is. The Emperor and the Legions have held the Empire together for hundreds of years. It's been a good thing, by and large. But maybe it's time for a change. Time for something young and new. What? No idea. Because I'm old. Old dog doesn't get new ideas. But maybe young folks like you should try some new ideas. I don't know. Could be messy. But change is never pretty. So, this guy is supposed to be Tiber Septum? Interesting. Yeah, why not? Well, that's a good place to end the stream. Wonder if there's anything that happens when you finally drop the coin. That'd be kind of cool. Actually, you know what? I want to save on the outside. And tomorrow we start our campaign inside a red mountain. As for me, that's gonna do it, guys. Thanks for hanging on. I know that today was a massive lore dump, it was just me reading a bunch of stuff, but hey, I had fun. Gave me a lot to think about, actually. If you want to go ahead and see something that's a little bit more action-packed than this episode, you totally can. We have different... See, now it's up to, like, 65 instead of 74, so I don't know what's going on. Have a good night, everybody. If you want to go ahead and check out some of my other stuff, you totally can. I have some uh, episodes available on YouTube that are geared more towards the modding side of things, so you can go ahead and check those out if you want to. I'm going to be hanging out on Discord um, 
throughout the day, off and on, so you can go ahead and hang out with me there if you want. Or if you want to get notifications as to when I'm going to be streaming next, you can do that as well. Uh, you can follow me here either on Twitch, or we also have a Steam group, a Twitter account, and of course the Discord. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good one. <laughs>